Uh, what's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izakaya podcast, week three of the winter 2020 season. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Ku. Well, oh, hello there. All right. Uh, we have other people joining us in, too, but uh, they'll be jumping in later. So this first half, it'll just be me and Ku. Um, before we get started for our show, I just want to mention real quick that Main Abyss Season 2 was just announced. So the uh, right now, there's a movie that's a sequel, and that just came on Japan. And... I'm assuming at the end of that movie, there was at the credits they announced that there's gonna be another another sequel to that for uh, I think a TV series. So it's exciting. Uh, looking forward to that. And then we're gonna start right away with uh, just uh, Bofuri or that long English English title. Um, I don't want to feel pain, so I put all my stats in defense. Uh, I think Bofuri is fine. Bofuri, <laughs> that's yeah. So this week in Bofuri, um. Was it? Kai is like her friend Risa. She finally joined in the game and she picked the GPS class, which I'm a fan of. Which is, it's also kind of funny because she picked um she picked like the character that like has dexterity and agility, so she basically just dodges. It kind of reminds me of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, basically Dunman. Like you can make him into a evasive tank where he just dodges everything. So that's what she most reminds me of. But this is more of a again like another chill up a soul just them just like just getting our levels up oh and then um and that one game that she played too where the, like the battle royale game where she got third yeah that's was um a little busted in my uh opinion but it seems to have worked because what did she do she was fighting she picked up a, a gemstone or something that gave the ability of devour she just popped that on her shield and she basically just absorbs everything, which I think is a little too strong for a like. I don't know like, why. I don't know why a tank gets the ability to absorb stuff, but again, this game doesn't make any sense to me. I'm just not gonna overthink anymore. I already did that last episode. I'm just gonna yes. not think of anything. But for this one, it's not too bad. It's still setting up the party. Um, so we have the glass cannon, and now we have the absolute tank. So um, I'm sure that. That one guy from the very first episode, uh, the Red Shielder, he's probably going to be the party as well. Um, and I'm sure they'll was, draw was other it, people. Was he, in the, was he in the opening? There was like a lot of people that were, that were in the opening, I assume. I could join the party later. Yeah, I'm going to say he was. I, I think he was at that end scene. So I'm sure he's probably going to join as well. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm definitely just treating this like a slice of life show now instead of an MMO or anything. Like... Oh, yeah. basically, you're basically just watching them just have fun playing this game. Yeah, I guess uh, until they... I think the next episode is when the show will start to pick up, I guess, with the introduction of the new DLC or the new expansion. Um, and I'm assuming with this new class, it might be more action-packed because now that the swashbuckler girl's in now, there should be more action before being a glass cannon. I like, I thought the fight against the, the giant fish or undead fish was uh was okay so it was at least it's not going to be one of those like dumb and dull out things where like everything attacks her and just fails and then you just have her standing there with a shield just absorbing everything so, i thought that was what the show was gonna be because yeah that's basically what episode one was yeah pretty much so I, I think right now it's just showcasing everything that that it that it can possibly have mm. um i don't know yeah that's there's not really much else going on in the show because like they don't really tell us much about the world or like any any like major like like any major quest right it seems like there's like more of like a sandbox mmo you basically just find like any any place and if you're strong enough just beat it um i want to say so but isn't that kind of how every other mmorpgs are i mean when i think i think i just made anything of like a wow and Final Fantasy 14 where there's like a main quest and the whole goal is just to get to the end game and then do end game content where you think about like stuff like Black Desert, like you just there's it's more like free form where you get to do your own thing. So I imagine this is what that's like. Or even like Maple Story, it's like I guess I mean they had quests there too, but it was still much more more free form. Um, I guess that's true. But then if anything, it might be more closer to RuneScape, if you remember that game. Oh, yeah, I guess RuneScape, too, yeah. Well, could we... 
I never got to the end game for RuneScape, so like I don't know what it's like, but like there's still like quests you had to do and like in like a linear path to like to level up. No, not really. There's no linear things. You can do whatever you want. No. There was like yeah. quests that you had to do to equip certain items, like the the best armor uh in the game. You had to beat the dragons, uh, which is called Dragon Slayer. Um But yeah, basically you just do whatever you want it. You want to cook, you want to chop down trees for the rest of your life, you want to fish, stuff like that. Yeah. So at least it looks like it's more open world, freeform. So with the whole slice of life comedy aspect thrown into it, I think it fits well, I guess. I guess, yeah. I mean, I should have expected from the first season or the first episode. I was just definitely overthinking it. Just, yeah, this is definitely more like slice of life. So. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna get mad at this show anymore. Getting mad over two middle school girls. Okay. <laughs> well, not mad at them. Just mad at the the game design. It's because like you uh-huh. think like stuff like this, like someone like just cheesing with like putting all stats on one thing. You would think they'd patch that out, unless this is like Riot Games balance, where you have a tank that can just like have an AOE poison attack. All I can say is, is no one is perfect. <laughs> okay. That's what beta testing is for. I don't know. I think it's okay so far. Yeah, it's just like I can't. I don't know. It's hard to recommend this to other people if you don't mind. Like, if if you're not looking for at all for slice of life, then it's like yeah, it's like if you want like an actual story or like an adventure, like it's not really what you're getting here. So that's why like I'm just watching just a slice of life. Yeah. No. Honestly, I don't know what I would recommend this as or to. Um... It's kind of just, yeah, slice of life. If you want to watch a bunch of girls play of life. games, yeah. yeah, there you go. Slice of life, basically. I think it's because of the title. Like, it made it sound like like it'd be dumb, but it could at least be like, like entertaining or I don't know, like like an entertaining adventure or an action show. But I think it still be like more a slice of life slash comedy. Yeah, judging from the title, I was expecting it to be all about her. And her overcoming her fear of getting hit, I guess. Right? I'd assume at the climax, she maxed out her defense stat, and she's still getting hurt in the process. So she has to find a way to overcome that, in a sense. Oh, I've, I've, I've read so many like love novels where I could tell like, what I thought of was exactly what, what happened. Okay. Yeah. That's how. That's, that's why I was um, being hard on it last week, just because it, it, it used so many tropes and so many cliches that I knew like everything that she was going to do. So... Yeah, but again, uh, designs are cute, so it's not like it's unbearable to watch, I guess. Mm, no, I'm just I'm just more I'm a sucker for like like MMOs and game moments, so that's like another thing keeping me going. So. Yeah, that's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not nothing amazing going on here so far. It's just been very generic, very basic um, elements. I think if Stren was here to complain about the animation, but I think it's fine for what it is. Like, in all honesty, I don't know what that guy's deal is with the animation. Like I said, <laughs> it's not horrible, but it's not like top tier no. either. I think you set your expectations for like what it's going for. So, right. Yeah. So, so for like, if you're not got over it, just it's it's fine. So, so yeah, I think that's gonna be it for Herbal Fury. It's nothing really has first. To discuss, so we're gonna yeah. move on to our our next show, uh, Darwin's game, and then so this episode, uh, basically we're getting, we're all, I'll say we're supposed to be getting into the treasure hunt game, but there wasn't really much of that. It was so much like exposition and stupid flashbacks with a negative like a negative filter that bothered me so much. This episode, really, like like there was like every like ten minutes there was always like just five or ten minutes like. A, stupid flashback about the first like two episodes and it's like mm-hmm. that's that negative film like like filter so it's just like i don't know i don't know what that's supposed to be like like make it like less obvious as flashback or make try to make more like important but it's just it was just dumb to me like well, i thought it was kind of weird how the mc at first seemed like he was competent and he was willing to kill to survive but when he was fighting against that one guy that had that submachine gun uh he he still hesitated, and he was going to die. AKA, he just pitched out. 
Right. I was like, man, you were expecting so much more from this guy. I, I can. Like, this survival battle. This is what all the main characters are like. They always hesitate. And they always get carried by like the female uh, the female heroine uh, or the heroines. Yeah. Uh, so that's why, that's why it, it makes it so hard to believe that like cuz cuz then you see Shuka, she was still killing a bunch of people this game and she's still undefeated. I, mm-hmm. It still makes it hard to believe that she lost to this guy. Um I think it was more of just a surprise element that caught her off guard. Maybe that's it. Probably, yeah. Like, you know how in League of Legends, when you uh, expect people to sidestep or dodge, and then you shoot a skill shot in that direction, <laughs> they don't dodge, so you miss? Sure, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that, right? She's good against people who does the meta stuff, but anyone that does anything that's unexpected, it will catch her off guard. And the guy I was saying, too, like, he can only do, like, like he, can, he can only make it the stun gun or, like, the... The, the 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 gun whatever like just I don't know just I think that would be the best time to practice your power and think about a chainsaw or something like no because I think it, they refocus the fact that he has to touch something to recreate it because before he left uh with that with that one girl with the sniper rifle uh he touched that guy's SMG to make an imprint of that. oh so I think in the next episode he's gonna bring that out okay I guess that makes more sense I thought it was like more like I guess he needs like yeah, just just the feeling, just to make it more like physical in his mind. Yeah. But uh, so far, this Flores guy seems pretty OP. Do you think they're gonna finish it in the next episode, or it's gonna be like a two episode parter? I don't. I don't know. I think if they can finish it in the next episode, I don't really think they're gonna drag out this this hunting event that that long. Hmm. Because they gotta like, I don't know. I think like the main focus has gotta be like just on the ace, the ace clan with with with, with Wang, with Wang, Wang, yeah, Wang. Because they say Wang and the Japanese word for them. But yeah, it's weird. They didn't even showcase them this episode, did they? No, it was all it was all like just the hotel, basically all the hotel slash like the spectators watching Shuka outside. Oh, yeah, so there's that part, too. So there's an actual corporation that's in charge of everything, and apparently all the rich, luxurious people are invited to this uh, the screening, in a sense. So <clears throat> it looks like it's not so it's just some random, mysterious force that's that created this app, right? It's created by some top-tier co- evil company or whatever. You're saying Google or Facebook made this game? I mean, from the sounds of it. <laughs> They also own a casino, apparently. I mean, you're a trillion dollar company, and you do you own whatever company you want. Yeah, I suppose. But um, because okay, they because they, they introduced the the new girl, um, Themis, whatever. For sure, she's gonna be important later. Because because they also had they had that one girl with the, the fox mask in there, and does she beat the other guy? And I can't tell. I th- I'm assuming they're gonna be villains, maybe, because they like they work for the, the company. Uh, possibly. I think that the, the girl the fox mask, I think she was in the openings, but I think she's I'm assuming she's one of the villains. Because the rifle girl was she's definitely gonna join like their team. Um I wanna say she's probably gonna be a good guy, I'm not sure. And then they're gonna be fighting against this giant corporation that made the made the app. I guess, but I, I can just see like I'm just gonna assume the um the the last thing in the show, like the last like four episodes, is gonna be fighting against the Ace Clan, and so it's gonna end by like by killing killing Wang, and then like, and then just gotta say, so we won, we still we won the battle, but we still have to fight the war, and they're still gonna be stuck in the game, and then that's just gonna be it for the anime season, and then True. basically it was just, the the show's gonna say, hey everyone, just read the manga. I really hope they don't do that. <clears throat> that's, that's why I'm guessing. There's no way they got finished this game in like in 12 episodes or 11 episodes. Yeah, that's true. Um, Maybe I'll get a second season announced, but I don't know. These kind I mean, of like like survival games like don't like usually get a second season. Uh, I guess it depends on how popular it gets, right? During this season. I don't really see how I don't really see a game that popular. It's just because winter is so weak. Like exactly. most attention. Most attention right now is just like it's it's like Hero Academia and like 
Fate and just like Madoka and and um Railgun, like all like the franchises basically getting all the attention. Well, usually these types of animes they usually leave it open ended for season two. And then yeah, I but... guess there's like a 50-50 chance if it's popular and it picks up in sales, they'll probably give it the green light to do the second season. And then if they see that it doesn't do that well, they'll probably just stop. I just don't see like much hype or like discussion around a show, so I don't know. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, but just that was basically yeah. Just I'm just me complaining. Just me complaining about the flashbacks that just really bothered me. It's just uh, like I just know I just, it was just so so noticeable during this episode. The only thing that bothered me this episode was just the fact that the MC kind of bitched out, <clears throat> just because I had such high hopes with that guy, right? Especially after the first three episodes, he defeated the undefeated queen. He did what he had to do without hesitation. And then the very first guy, the uh, Banda, right, that, that Panda mascot, like, yeah, he was struggling and he was, like, panicking. But that was the very first villain. So that was understandable. And then in the alley, when he fought against that one brawler, like, he held his own just fine without hesitation. So to have him go back to square one and be a little bitch again is is kind of worrisome for his development. Main character syndrome. This is why I don't get my hopes up for anyone. <laughs> All right. So I think that's going to be it for um, for Darwin's game. Um, we're going to move next on to Science Fell in Love. I think English, English I was like, Science Fell in Love, so I tried to prove it. I thought this episode was pretty funny. Like, just the whole date scenario. Yeah, I got to admit, it's, it's, it's pretty hilarious. I like it a lot better than Kaguya-sama. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I still like Kaguya-sama better. Yeah, I think well, that's more entertaining. I think this one, it's like you pretty much have to like understand, like, or I don't know, kind of get a feel like the, like the the math and science involved, like when they're doing like. For me, for me, it's more of just the characters. Like, I like the characters a lot more. Uh, like the the MC and uh, Himoro, um, I just like them a lot as a character. They're 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 super smart. They're very unique. And obviously the girl is in love with the guy and the guy likes the girl, but they they can't break out of the character. Like they have to make sure it's scientifically uh positive that they're in love with each other before they can go through with it. So I, I kinda like it. I just like I just thought it was funny, just on the spot like like graph charting and and risk analysis. I was, I was dying when that happened. Or like when, oh, you mean um, when she pulled out the laptop to reject yeah. the guy? <laughs> and he, he was like, here's, here's a pie chart of like why I can't go out with you. But the biggest part is I think you're creepy. And here's the first assessment of, uh, what was it, a low-quality pickup. <laughs> right? Like, damn, like, you got shot down so hard. Yeah, she got shot, she got shot down in front of his two friends. And then he got shot down harder when like when um the main guy came over. And he's like, I have all this data. I still can't prove that I'm in love with her. Yeah, you know, I was like, dude, know your place, just, you fucking pleb. Just, just like, just <laughs> slapped him all like his 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 research papers. Yeah, dude, like I gave no fucks. Oh, dude, that was like the best scene of the episode. But yeah, that's that's what I like about the guys. It's they don't break out of their their the character, and it's just, like to me, it's very unique in these kind of rom com. Uh, yeah. Series. Well, also the thing is like, um, besides that, like they're not annoying that's the thing it's like because there are certain characters that stick to it that gets annoying but like they do it very well where they're not like they're not all like logical and like and strict to like the science type they're also like they show emotion too and so like yeah as as the as the series goes on you kind of realize that they are still human and they uh they do have the capability of like setting up these moments and reading other people's minds in a sense, yeah. or they're not completely blindsided by these things. Yeah, I think it's just because like they just really enjoy they enjoy science, so it's not it's like it's not just like a trope that the that the that the writers put in just to make them science good. It's like they really enjoy it, and then like they're trying to express it through like their feelings and stuff. So right. and that's like a big part of why the comedy is so is is, is or the why the comedy succeeds is because like. Like they're just excited, so like you see that that side from them. Yeah, that's true. 
I um I don't know how they plan to keep this up though for twelve episodes. To be honest, like, I think they can do it. Like, they probably just like go back and forth between like all the different like like date scenarios or yeah. And plus, I have the other characters lean on on like the other people in the research lab. So yeah, still I I don't um I I guess they can. I just it'll be hard for me to kind of picture without going stale if it's the same two characters over and over. Like, I think we'll lean into the other characters because this episode was mainly focused on the two main characters, but I think there'll be some where it's like they focus on like, um, like what was it, like Toroske or whatever, and the other like TV like scientists. Oh, I think they'll Arata. focus on those two. Yeah, Eva Yeah, I think they'll focus on those two later on because this was mainly just on like the two main characters. Because I think earlier they had to focus on um Kanade, so. Uh. Yeah, but she's more of just a backstory, not really like the main focus. But what was this episode four, right? I think, I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe this is the end of their arc, and it's now time for uh, I think it was Inukai, the that one guy, and Ibarada yeah. get together because apparently they're childhood friends. Um, yeah, they are. So maybe they'll start slowly he, showcasing them now. Well, I mean, he's only like. His uh his dating sims he plays the one the games that looks like her so, mm-hmm. so I, I think that's pretty funny but like yeah like I said it'll, it'll be interesting to see where they go with this but if anything I'm assuming they're gonna slowly start heading towards uh, Eberada's route rather than just the two MCs yeah I mean that'd be fine they can also just like just change like the main character's personalities make them like realize more about like 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 dating and love and just like make them less like naive and stuff so there's always that route but we'll see uh um, I'm, not, I'm not worried i'm not worried about the, the, the series being stale i think it'll, it'll be fine yeah well i suppose I, I don't want them to develop it so much that it goes outside of character in a sense because i think that would make it lose its uh um uh, what's the word it would lose its personality i would say I think it'll be, I mean, yeah, so that's why I think they can still stay in the character, and I think they'll be fine. They'll have enough material for like the rest of this like 12 episode season. But it'll probably end sooner just because like they streamed the first three episodes the first day, so. Yeah, I thought that was weird. I thought they were going to do that and then go on like a three week hiatus. But for them to shoot out episode four and keep going is kind of weird. Yeah, so it might it might end earlier than we thought, but it's that's fine. Like I think this show will be fine. Like I'm really enjoying it and looking forward to the rest of the season. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And then I still want to know who that buff guy is, is all be Oh yeah, he still hasn't showed up yet. Nope. <laughs> so hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I think that's gonna be it for Science Fell in Love. And then um, we're going to move on to Plunderer, because I, I forgot to bring this up last week, because I saw the first episode. And then, but the second episode came out, like, today. Even though, like, we had, they were, these two episodes were already, they were already shown before, so Kuhir has already seen them, so. Yeah, it was really weird. Because uh, you said pre- Yeah, it was like a special preview, it was a one-two yeah. special, but you say you couldn't find it on your end. I don't know, it's just like, maybe I had to go back further. Because I only, I only found episode one, but I couldn't find like the English sub for episode two. Oh, okay. So maybe maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough, but but this week like episode two came out, so yep. So I guess we should, um just give a little backstory on the show, like basically. Well, actually, no, I should mention too. This is the same author behind um, Heaven's Lost Property and um, Watashi no Masaya Sama. So the thing is like Heaven's Lost Property. It was, it was a very etchy show, but the way they authored, it was like that was an etchy show, but like it also had like serious, like serious stuff in it too. Like it had a serious tone in the background, where you knew like, like once the story actually got going, like they had to like, it was like like the the tone shifted to like being serious, and that's and the th- in his previous series, Watashi no Messiah Sama, that was all like serious because the whole point of that show was that um. It was supposed to subvert the the fancy world, like it was, I mean, it was an isekai, but like, but basically, like the main character when 
he was expecting to go into this fantasy world and like have like a fun adventure and he, he just goes in and just like it's just a war zone like it's just, like dead bodies everywhere and it destroyed villages and so that like so it, it had this very serious tone of um just like like you know like this is this is war like like it's not your lucky like, go luck happy go lucky adventure like little kid you know so but with etchiness no uh was no masai song i had it did have any etchy it was all serious oh okay so that first, that first series was all serious and then his the next his next series uh heaven's lost property that was etchy like it moved like like yeah mostly etchy with like a bunch of serious story in the background so so that's so then we want to plunder this next series like like the first episode again like yet the perverted like guy like getting kicked around and stuff for for being a pervert because yeah he kind of deserved it to be honest because because like because like the okay well in this show like we have you have numbers on everyone and the number is supposed to correspond to something about you but like if your number ever goes down to zero and then like you get sent to the abyss which I assume is like some like underworld hell or something or some di- different dimension. And so, so the main girl, her name's Hina. Um, she has her like her number on her thigh, of course. And so, like her number is like the number of uh, I think it's like was a hundred, hundred kilometers she walks or something. Yeah, for every one k kilometer she walks, she got a plus one. It's, it's I think it's like a hundred k or hundred k kilometer or, or not hundred k. I mean it's a hundred kilometers. No, I think it's a thousand kilometers. I think it's a thousand kilometers, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. I don't because I don't think it's just one kilometer. I think it's like something like a hundred kilometers. That's why, like, uh, that's why like uh, Nana was so surprised when she said her her count was like four hundreds because I mean she like walked a whole bunch. Oh right, right, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I think it was a hundred kilometers, and then her number is four hundred and forty. So she's walked like yeah. forty four thousand kilometers. Yeah. For the past five years, yeah. So yeah, so in this, it's like it's whatever number you have is. I don't know what's supposed to, it's supposed to be like your. I think it's supposed to be your social status, I guess, in society. It's like the higher the number, the, the like the higher status you are. Uh, supposedly, yes. The higher the number, the more higher up in a uh, nobility class you're supposed to be. Yeah. So like, and she of course she's looking for someone called the legendary ace because that's what her mom told yeah. her. She's supposed to be like this, you know, this this hero from like like this this war hero or something, and she's given like this like this ball, or like this orb, the ballot, that, the ballot, yeah, mm-hmm. has like has a ten thousand number on it, so you assume it has like ten thousand of the counts, and her mom tells her to go find the legendary ace. So it's like that's that's, that's like the step so far. So it sounds like a f- very like you know standard like like standard Jonah and fancy, but then of course like the main guy shows up and he's like. He gets he gets up to her and like tries to like spread her legs because he wants to see the number on her thigh or whatever, and then you know right, he gets kicked he gets kicked around and then, of course, like it's called pervert by the other other girls and he just just kind of gets beaten up just like other etchy series. So it's like, so it's like this show. It's like, of course, it's setting up Mickey thing. It's like an etchy show, and then but then like you know the twist is like oh like the main guy is actually good like after all again like. But it's like, I just don't really like that because it's just, I don't know, like, if it's, if it's supposed to be like, like, either, like, a subversion, it's like, I just don't like this subversion just because, like, you can, you can set up the show fine without it. And it just turn, turns off people who, like, who really don't, like, or they actually would just turn off other people who are given the show a chance. Yeah, that's true. I think this was targeted towards a certain audience, so... Hmm. At least there's because like I know the author thought behind it. Because the yeah, guy has like to, I know like the guy has to. Uh, at first, I thought it was how many girls he's uh, he's been rejected by, but by the end of episode yeah. two, I think it's how many girls he's rejected. Because at the mm-hmm. end of the episode, it went from minus nine ninety nine to a thousand minus a thousand. After uh, he just left Hina all alone. So I want to say is how many girls he's rejected, not how many girls has re- rejected him. Uh, and then probably. when he came and saved Hina in the first place, he seemed pretty, pretty normal, pretty badass. Like he he was a hero. So maybe it's just all a trope 
to get people to reject them or something. I'm, I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, but again, it's like, like, because it's author, like, I, I really enjoy it when you get serious. But then, like, when you put edgy stuff, like, 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 Heroes, Heaven's Lost Property, it's like, like, the edginess that like, turns away so many people when, like, there was, like, a pretty decent story behind it, but, like, it just gets buried in the edgy. True, yeah. And then this episode, too, it's, like, the whole, like, because he wears a he wears a mask, and then like, he like, wears a mask and like, has like the long hair. So it's just this weird guy just shows up, and but then of course like, you break the mask and give him the haircut. Of course he looks, he looks all handsome and stuff. It's like, I don't no, know. He just, was always handsome, sir. Oh my God. <laughs> just like I just don't like this setup. And then the preview for the next episode, it's like, it sounds like he's doing it. He's like again like trying to spread girls' legs. So it's like, it seems like he's going back to the etchy. Yeah, man, you gotta get the number up, bro it's like i'm really i because i i don't know everything else besides that like, sounds sounds interesting like it's interesting even if it's standard like it sounds like an interesting adventure but it just gotta get like bogged down by the etchy i mean even that not just the mc but whenever those hands come up to like swap out the numbers or whatever it was always kind of weird how they would like pin her down and spread her legs take the number off and put it back on so i found that to be kind of weird too and uh, I feel like that could turn off potential viewers. Um, it's it's just it's well that's just because she has her number on her on her thigh because even, even even still, David, it's kind of weird, right? The placement like, of the number and how you yeah like, no no exactly no, that's it, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's the he does that for Yechi. like he could have put it someplace normal, but he does that for the Yechi. He just make an excuse to spread her leg. So do you like this Arthur or not really? I was like, I like his serious stuff. Like his first series was all serious, and I really enjoyed it. But then he just like, he just, I don't know. I don't want to say sell out, but like he just basically just like just does his class has just been like just edgy, just to get the views or the attention. So, hey man, ideas don't sell, sex sells. So you got to make bread somehow. Oh my god. So I just think he's he's better. I know he's better in this. So it's just it's just disappointing that. I have to go through all the etchy just to get to the good stuff. That's just life, sir. It's okay. Just just That's enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. That's not life, man. Well, yeah. Uh, again, no. Like, I'm okay with the etchiness as long as it's done tastefully. Um, as of right now, I mean, there wasn't too much. There wasn't like really too much. This episode was just like it's just right. Like, but, but even then, it's it's kind of on a borderline for me, to be honest. Yeah. Like it's tolerable, but hopefully it doesn't get too uh, overdone, like in the next few episodes. But I, I, I guess we'll see. Uh, so, because in Heaven's Lost Property, it took them a while for um to get them this the serious stuff. Because like, because it was always more like like episodic, like or the series was episodic for a while. With like, where like uh, the main guy had like, this angel that could do anything, so just he was just doing a bunch of dumb stuff. So, but this one is an actual adventure, so we'll see if they actually do, if they actually have to, like, go to, like, other towns and, like, do something. So, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, because apparently there's, what, 11 more legendary aces? So, he was number 001, lightning yeah. flash or something oh, like that. That's the thing I was going to mention, too. Like, God, I can't believe they have a fucking radio in this supposedly, like, medieval town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that was thought out place. Like, come on, you really, you couldn't just use like a magic spell for communication. You had to use a stupid like, like, this look like a Bluetooth, like, like, like Bluetooth, like. And it's top of a Bluetooth headset, didn't he? <laughs> in a sense. God, he's so dumb. Like, it was already, it was, it's fantasy enough. Why do you have to put that in? Yeah, that was really out of place. I don't know. Was, like I said, so this, dumb. it's, it's a little bit of everything in a sense. Um, so I'm assuming there's gonna be like a scientist later on that they'll meet. Uh, that can kind of nick these same devices yeah, as like well. A medieval but, fantasy town, and you have you have the you have Lich like just go off with a carriage like that, and then there's some guy who shows up with a Bluetooth like headset. Like, come on. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little far fetched. I I don't know what they're doing with this. <sighs> but I mean, it's it's caught my interest. I want to see how the next episodes play out. Or like, in, yeah, or like uh, whoever the next legendary pieces are, like how. What their character design is like. I think there's like 25 episodes or something. So, so okay. it'll be I think it'll be around for a while. I assume I don't think they're gonna skip next season too. So we'll see. But 
I'm only interested just because it's the author of Heaven's Lost Property and Watashi no Masaya-sama, so. I feel like this might be one where I just end up reading the manga later on, too, once the show ends or something. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I think maybe Darwin's game will just read the manga, because I don't really expect that to get second season. Oh, true. Yeah. So, but we'll see. <clears throat> but all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there wasn't really much to go on. I guess it was kind of weird, again, with it being uh, a one-two special episode. It would have made a lot more sense, because I didn't like how the first episode ended off on. Of course, it's the cliffhanger. Yeah, I thought that was kind of dumb for a first episode. Uh, but yeah, I think episode two wrapped up that that arc or that story fairly well. Um, Pretty much in- intro, right? So, hopefully, the next two three episodes you see more character development with all of them. Yeah, I assume it's still gonna be Hina, just because like the the preview made it just sound like it was just Lich, but he's probably they'll probably just meet up later, like eventually. Yeah, well, fair carrying a ballot and apparently it being worth like uh, tons like being super valuable um she's probably going to be an easy target now um well i mean the the guard like he didn't even care about the ballet he just care about the the ace so right so you say but i guess we'll see what happens later on because maybe there's someone else that caught attention to the fact that she still had the ballot hmm um and then maybe she'll travel along with Nana, that that lady that was in charge of that um, traveling cavern. Oh yeah, but like, but her her number is like it's 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 like how many customers are satisfied or whatever. So I don't know if she can leave her shop. No, but she's just traveling tavern. I thought mm-hmm. wasn't she? I don't know. I I thought she was just some. Um, I thought she was just just like a res- she was in that town and she was just like just new witch or something. She might know more other legendaries too. I want to say, just the fact that she knew Lich, like the coincidence of her and Lich knowing each other fairly well, is kind of weird. I feel like she knows more than what she's letting off on, and I think as oh, like yeah. the the narrative of the story, isn't it the same voice actor as her? I don't even I didn't even catch that. So it, it sounds like it's the same person telling the story. So okay. um, I, I feel like she knows a lot more than what we uh, what she's letting off on. Hot. Pay attention more to that next episode, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I got for this one. All right, yeah, so that's gonna be it for Plunderer. Um, so next, we're gonna move on to these are the next shows that, that I just watched, so I'll just I'll just go over briefly for all of them. So, next one is Madoka on Machika Record. Um, so this was like I think episode three, but basically, we had a cliffhanger episode two where it was like because. The staircase one where um Rena she just got she just got so pissed at at uh, the other girl, uh, I think Kaede, yeah. And she's so she wrote her name on the staircase to end their friendship and then she got aimed by the witch. And so I'm surprised that um it didn't really they didn't really do much with that witch. They basically just like just came in just to rescue her. I guess the more the twist of this episode is like episode at the end, it's like mommy shows up and she's from the original she was from the original Maoka series. So, so I think I think like I think that they say the timeline for this show is supposed to be the, it's supposed to be one of the the older timelines from before like um Hermora tried to save Madoka. So I'm not exactly sure like how it all fits, but like if she's there, I assume it's before like the the Madoka the original Madoka timeline. So so that's that's interesting. We'll see Mommy. I'm assuming maybe we'll. See see like uh, Madoka and Homura later but I don't know I'm, overall I mean the show is still pretty I'm still enjoying the show like if you're a fan of Madoka like you definitely you should definitely watch it um it's not it's like it's not as like there's not as much weird stuff in this in this story but like, it's still pretty interesting um it's pretty been pretty straightforward it's just with just um Iroha trying to find a curse sister and so I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Like, what's gonna be the? I guess like the main like story so far is just like there's something weird going on in in Kamiyama City. So we'll just have to figure out like see what happens with with what's going on in that situation. Um, but I think yeah, 
I guess as a side story, it's not that since it's taking place like in the timeline before, there's nothing really much connecting it it to like the main the main series besides besides like just the character cameos, but um yeah. Oh, overall, like it's nothing much I can take for this episode. Like I'm still really enjoying the series. Still recommend it if you've seen the original Monica series. So that's gonna be it for Monica. And then next, um, move on to ID Invaded. Um, so, so usually it it'll be me and Ku talking about it, but Ku forgot to watch the episode this week, so it'll just be me. To be fair, I was sick today, so I'll sleep in majority of the day. <laughs> no, it's not no problem, man. Don't worry about it. So. <laughs> He also said I didn't mind if I spoiled, so I guess I'll just talk about like what happened this oh, yeah. episode. Well, means... Okay, so so this one is also just like a one another one one off case where um so so apparently also I didn't realize this where because uh, Sakaido is is the main character. That's just, just his name when he dives into the well. I think it, his real name is like Akihito um Nari, Nara Nara Hisago or something, but. I was just, I thought his his entire name was uh, Sakaido this whole time, but I guess it's just like his identity in the well. I think that's why he looks different too, is because yeah, he, he takes on a new look and a new name. So that's one thing I just need to clear up first. But oh, also uh, with Kairu, uh, it turns out it's it's not unique to the person; she's always there as well, just like John Walker. So I just had to clarify that from the last podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, this episode like Kyra, they didn't really go much into her. Really, it's just like she was just there, just to again try to help. She's like the missing piece that solves like the the, the puzzle. Um, it was kind of funny too. They had like the other guy. Um, they tried to have him dive in, and he just couldn't take the handle because he kept dying too much. But then this episode too, um, they really went to show how like this how this case was really hard for Sakaido because. He kept dying so many times, and you just keep, keep seeing him just die over and over again. And it went on for like at least the first time he it was like the first part was like six hours that he was diving in. And then I think that even then, like they probably had to work when um when the director came in telling them to they can rest. I think he's he's implying that they were working like overnight or something. So like this episode really showed how just. I guess how much, how much like work and like how much effort they have to put into the well itself. So, I think that was pretty interesting. Just them showing off like yeah, how hard like just diving it is, and why they really they really need the Kaido, because he's like the only one who can do it. He's the only one who can do it well, and even then, like he still struggles. Like like in this case, <laughs> and it's pretty fucked up. Just this just this case in general, like just the fact that. Like the whole thing around revolve around like like just someone getting kidnapped and then being live streamed and just like everyone just watching like the person just slowly suffocating to death like in like the trapped room running out of oxygen to breathe like and because then and then because like they reached a point where it was like a hundred k people watching this I'm like man that's it's just I don't know I just, I just, you just imagine like this like for stream like on YouTube or Twitch like just having a hundred k people watch someone slowly run out of air in a room just pretty fucked up but but it's something i'm not surprised what would actually happen in the real world i can see it happening in the real world just so that's pretty pretty fucked up and then and also it's pretty fucked up too how like how like um like in the the well like you like you had to kind of like um, so like he's eventually saved he saved the girl in the well and she was saying like the one part was like thank you for saving me but then you realize, like, she still died in the real world. So, like, all that effort they went to, just like all the exhaustion and just like Sakaido dying over and over again, just and just and and the other team too, just working, working long hours just for not even a matter because like the girl died anyway. So, that's also pretty fucked up. But, but overall, um. I'm still very really enjoying the series. I think this this episode was really a good way to show how hard like just diving in the well is, and how how much they really need Sakaido, and just and it's just really like I don't know. It's uh, we still don't really know like I, like much about like what 
what like the end 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 goal is, or like I guess it's just still trying to perfect like the the diving tool, but I don't know. It's just it's pretty interesting. So I'm definitely looking forward to the later episodes. Just like more and more cases. Like this this one again. I didn't really have give you much to solve. But you're just basically there just for the ride. And not really much of a twist in this one either. It's just like I think it's just showing off just just more of the mechanics of the diving stuff and just how hard it is. So I'm hoping later episodes it would show how um it would just show how or or just show more complicated like wells and just like really make make Sakaido think more and like use use his analysis because this one is just mainly him just dying a lot and just him basically trying to survive. Oh, and also cool. There was like a there was like a a song they inserted in this episode, which was pretty dope. I enjoyed it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there's like a separate song, and I really like the ending song too. Like, it gets, it gets me really pumped at the end. Is it is it in English? Um, it's just not in all in English. Just some English. Uh, but, certain would have loved it then. But yeah. That's that's basically it for ID Invaded. So this is probably one going my my dark horse of the the season so far. I mean, so far it's pretty good. So we'll see if it it's on. But I'm really enjoying ID Invaded. So you're saying that this episode was a one episode arc in a sense? Just just one arc, one one off, yeah. Because the case is solved in the episode. Oh okay. But she dies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it feels bad. Oh, and then it, oh, and then Friday, there's an ending too. This is a dumb ending. With the fucking like um field worker chick, like she says something dumb again. So, so you you like if she gets kidnapped in that next episode, I wouldn't be surprised. Dumb or reckless? Just, just I don't know. Like just she just went out, just goes off on her own. Yeah, but the last time she did something reckless like that, she helped solve the case. Well, this was after like, the the person was in arrested. She finds like some suspicious character in a crowd, and she goes try to go find him. And then of course she gets she they, she gets cut off by him in the end, and nothing happens so far. But like that's where it left, leaves off. So, oh, so okay. if she gets kidnapped next episode, I wouldn't be surprised. Or they'll maybe do a twist saying, "Oh, like it's not kidnapping; he's just actually someone useful for them or something." I don't know. But again, it's like just if she doesn't kidnap, then that's that's just her own fault for being dumb. <laughs> I suppose. It's like chasing off a suspicious person on her own. Without, without any, without any, not even notifying like her partner, she just goes off on her own. Hey, it's when you get that feeling of justice, you gotta do what's right, you know. Yeah, so that's gonna be it for uh, ID Invaded, and then I'm um, next on move on to Pet. Um, this so this second episode actually I like better than the first one because they actually go more in depth into the mechanics of like just them like diving into the the psychological stuff and how they actually like i guess like mind control people but it was just like basically just this whole episode was like an explanation of the first episode so i mean it definitely has me more interested so i'll I'll keep watching it now because i was really worried just the first episode was pretty i thought it was pretty boring this one like it actually starts making more sense and so and like um the two so the two like like crushers they choose, I think like Subasa and Hiroki, like I'm more interested in their story now because I I wonder if the story if the story's gonna focus on to them. So um what's it like and then they just I guess one more in the backstory of, of Kenji and um uh Yok- Yokota I, I forgot the other guy's name, but I know Kenji was the guy with the dreads, so and like and like that that Katsuragi guy is so annoying. So like I, should, I hope we don't see more of him. But I assume he's like someone important. He seems he sounds like someone like they would kill off later, or he'd be like a main like antagonist. So I I still don't know like what what they're trying to do with this story. Like I guess like it's just like like an either an underground organization or some criminal organization that that's just that has like all these people like mind controlling everyone and then. I wonder if it was a switch perspective to, um, yeah, just to the two the two crushers to Hiroki and Tsubasa, and then maybe a little more Satoru because 
he's mainly seems like he's mainly attached to Katsuragi, but but I don't know. It's like overall, like nothing. Yeah, nothing really. Like it's like because the first episode was just like the whole weird like mind control stuff, and then this episode was just trying to explain. Yeah, just trying to explain the mind control things or the mechanics behind the mind control, and just like diving into other people's like memories. So, but I think yeah, this second episode was much better. Like, I actually had like a better flow, and like it wasn't just like jumping in and out of people's hallucinations. So that was good. So, um, overall, yeah, I think that's, I think. That's, that's basically it. It's like nothing really much I can say for pet. I'm looking forward to um more of the episodes later on, so So that's all I gotta say for pet. And then um so that's 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 just it for me and Koo for our shows. And we gotta wait for uh Stren and Brian to show up for many here academia and then other shows. Oh and also I have to mention too, um we're gonna um talk about wedding review. I should mention that in the first I should mention that in the first part initially. Yeah, we watched Wedding Review last week, so that's gonna be uh that's gonna be its own segment at the end. So So oh. that's just gonna be it for now and then we'll um we'll um just take a little break now and then just come back with uh with Stren and maybe Brian and we'll continue on with the rest of the shows. All right. All right. Um so welcome back everyone. Um just gotta reintroduce here. We got Stren joining us with us right now. Hi guys. I am currently uh what is it? Lemillion. <laughs> and then we also have Brian with us. Hello. Yeah, so I'm in a different location for uh, today. I am not in my normal home. So this is this is as good as it's going to get. It's it's fine. So we, we got these two together. Um we're gonna now head on over to My Hero Academia. So um this is I would say a big episode. I assume this is like the end of that's like Jisaki Airy arc. And yes. A lot of things happen here. So the big thing mainly being like um Night Eye basically dying. Um Good. they also pretty much do they're we, saying Do we to, know if he's dead? Wait, bro. Okay, hold on. Oh, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just wanna say this, man. You can't skip over his death, man. I legitimately was on I was actually crying, dude. Really? On his was, death? Yeah. Okay, no, no, no. The reason why I was crying was as soon as as Muriel walked in there and started spewing out everything and started crying, I was like, "Bro, please stop, dude! I'm starting to cry too, dude." I was like, "This dude is just saying, please don't die, man. This is the reason why I fought all the way through this." Oh my god! I was like, "Dude, stop!" Oh, it, like for his death, like I actually I was not like I, I'm still not even really attached to Night Eye, but I Listen. felt really bad for Lemillion. Like Lemillion killed, like he he made the scene. Like uh, it, he he definitely made a I, I shed a tear for Lemillion. Hell yeah, yeah. I don't give a shit about Night Eye dying. It was just the fact that Lemillion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not so bad. What? It's like... Dude, that's <clears throat> fucked up. That's yeah. just fucked up. What are you talking about? Yeah. Good. Okay, Kui, Kui, just have to think of it this way. So it's, it's like when you see him him dying, I just keep thinking, thank God it wasn't All Might. <laughs> oh my god, he's next. All right. Uh, or even Lemillion, dude. I, I oh god, if Lemillion, I mean... like if it was like reversed, I would have felt. I, I don't even know. I mean, basically, as good as dead about his, his quirk. Ah, oh, David. Yes, but we have a cop. We have a cop out that I love so much. I guess it's, Fuck it's your only cop a matter out, of time, man. man. Only a matter of time. No, that cop out's gone. It's gone. For now. I oh. mean, they can always they can always like <laughs> bring him back. Like, they can do something with Aerie, but for now, like they basically just yeah, he's confirmed that like her power's out of control. She's like. She's like in a fever. She's training. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm glad that like, you're not, not going to use it as a cop out anytime soon. I'm just, I'm yeah. still worried that she's going to be a cop out like later on. But well, I think like a big part of her, like uh, where it, it just kind of kind of like sets it up now. It's like um, Aizawa said it himself. He's the only one that can control her in a sense or yeah. calm it down. So I'm guessing like a lot of the, the, the part now with Aizawa is going to be trying to hone her skills because it's definitely a really OP skill. And then when you have um, recovery goal, recovery girl, you know, reaching her her golden age, um, there's gonna be there, there's going to be an, or there's gonna be a need for another healer, and you know the most OP healer, man. Well, I think that they're just basically just gotta try to 
have her try to reverse the effects of the bullet, just mainly for like a million, but also because the villains they have the bullets now, so yeah, ex- we'll be expect them to use it soon. Okay, oh. I have I have, a, I have an issue with uh now that we have like the bullets about how they acquired them. It's like you're gonna tell yep. me you get like this high like this high like a uh, villain like a Chisaki, and you know and the like the the people that you have. Trans, like transporting him are cops and a dude that throws sand. Are you kidding? We've never heard of this guy. What's wrong with a dude throwing sand? I mean, yeah, you know how strong already, he is. Yeah, wait, have we seen him before? No, but no. Okay, see, there's your problem. <laughs> he's a side character bit, and now he's gone. Actually, You're right. Did he get captured or killed? I I actually don't know what happened. In the he whole turned thing. into the ball. I think they just yeah. left him. Well, they made it sound like it's like uh like he was going to die in the ball. Um. I don't know if I don't even know how they would recover him or they kind of just like after that scene happened, they just kind of skipped over it and went back to Deku and you know, Night Eye and uh, the million scene. Or no, before that though, like, um, it's like Tomar basically like fucked over Shisaki. Oh, yeah, removed his arms, I think. Yeah, which is weird because I because like because they were saying like I think like with all his hands, he can't use his quirk, which I uh-huh. is really weird. You'd think, I don't know. That doesn't he make any sense. He to just heal himself, but yeah, um, I think the only reason why he can't is because he's. Uh, I think what he, whatever isn't it what he's strapped into. Like they can't use their quirk. I don't know. I think that that's the only thing I came up with. But first, like when they did that, and he's laughing maniacally, I'm thinking, bro, he can just <laughs> he can just recover his arms. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like <laughs> he's just there. Like he can re- like rebuild himself. I don't know. Like. No, I'm gonna have to say that I think it was all in his hands. That's why he had to wear gloves to control himself. Yeah. Um. So now that his hands are cut off, I think he's pretty much useless. Hmm. I don't Which... know because it's even when he was like when he was merged with those other um other bullets, he was still like like bringing his arms back even though they were already gone. So I don't know how he kept bringing them back. Them, like, if you guys remember that, like when he was, I don't know they were gone. Deku. I don't remember them being gone. Well, I mean, he was like, he had like arms. <sighs> yeah, but they weren't a part of him though. He would have, he had to like bring them back or like you know rebuild them, recover them, or whichever you want to, whatever you want to call but it. They were extra arms though. I don't think they were his own arms. <clears throat> yeah, if, if I remember correctly, he had he still had to touch part of his body. If I remember correctly, did he? I I want to huh. say yes. Brian, do you remember any of this or no? Um, pretty sure he had to touch something. God damn it, Brian! Why'd you why'd you talk? <laughs> okay, because <laughs> so... we had to get like, the ground to get like the pillars up too. So uh, okay, I would say that I would go back and watch it, but I just want this work to be done. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's I say. Good, but... uh, that, uh, that's that's the thing I was gonna say too. It's like because now we have both Stain and Chisaki. We now have like two villains who got sides like sidelined just to bring up the League of Villains and. Oh yeah, dude. Like, with, with, I'm just with, because like any other like shonen, like like these two villains have their their own like huge arcs. Yeah, with but, with, League of, with League of Villains, like and uh, Chisaki, like I miss Stain so much. They they definitely should have had his arc be a lot longer. I think. Um, especially like I still I still think he he was the best villain they've had. Um, Brian, I know you have very high thoughts on uh, Stain. Good. All right, he is so <laughs> good. They had to make another character that literally tries to copy him, dude. The lizard uh, guy, by the way. The lizard guy. The I don't know if he was guy. trying to copy him, but... Um, He's legit the biggest Stain fanboy in the world. Right. Wait, lizard guy? The guy that was driving the car? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he... I think, he, like... Uh, That's man, how I feel good like, Stain was, dude. I feel like the League of Villains, like, one, they're getting further away from Stain's ideal, and I feel like some of the... It, I don't know if they're hinting towards it or, if, or maybe just overthinking it. But it feels like uh, some of the people in um, in the League of Villains are kind of going away from, uh, I guess, what Tomura is doing, because like it well, seemed I mean, like they weren't a fan of them taking the bullets. Um, that, was, that was that was Spinner, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but That's I mean, like, he was saying, so so. Yeah, but there's a, so that there's a, that influence in the League of Villains, so it's like I, I can easily like at this point it seems like Tomura is just going to kind of go further away from Stan's ideals, and I think it's. It might, uh, it might, you know, cause rifts in the in the League of Villains, even though the the group is already so small. Um, like, well, that's just, again, I think it's just dumb because, like, because they're already fighting against Shisaki and his his groups, and like, yeah, 
it just makes like the threat like less like i don't know less important or something yeah um because like it it because it, it it's it looks like with them taking the bullets that it makes it more like they just want to maybe just destroy heroes in a sense instead of actually like how stain went about it same one to reform like yep. the hero industry yeah and didn't like, didn't league of villages want to destroy yeah. destroy it okay but then all of the league of villains want to though because didn't some of them come from, like because of after stain yeah because basically. They, they thought they had the same ideals basically yep. okay just checking but that's just again, like just there was there's potential in Jisaki's arc, just like just going just all the things he could have done and then it just ends like this. It's just so disappointing. Yep. So like sad. a little bitch. <laughs> yep. It's just like I mean they they yeah, they went they got Chisaki's they got into Chisaki so easy. They got the the bullets so easy after it seemed like uh like Chisaki did so much work getting those bullets. And Homura basically just had to fight a dude that threw sand. Well, to be easy. fair, it was like 1v3, 1v4. So, yeah. It was... We got to see Dobby again. I forgot what yeah. happened to him. <laughs> I, I, forgot, yeah. I forgot about him, but it's kind of just, just when he was like just saying how, um, like when the cop mentioned or the hero he mentioned, like, um, like there's reports of like burnt corpses everywhere. And then Dobby was saying, oh, people are talking about me. And then the, the, the hero was saying, like, like, don't you, what was it, don't you think about the, the people who left behind, whatever? So, I kind of like that think about that. Like, he's he's a pretty like he's more of a serious villain than like Tomara is. He's actually been like killing people, oh, yeah. like leaving their corpses behind. So, yeah, like I honestly, wish there was like more of that in like League of Villains, like like someone who's actually like a threat. Yeah, like, well, like maybe Tomara just seems so lame for a villain. <laughs> well, I think he's still trying to like figure himself out, like what he wants to do and how to do it. And I guess now that he has the bullets, he's going to develop that now. It's just, it's just like it just seems like ever since like like they captured like one like one for all and they had that one for all versus all might fight because it seems like one for all should have been like the big like villain that everyone was afraid of but now that they just captured him it's like we're is it just all for one or one for all I keep mixing this up all for one I forget all for okay. one anyway, all, we, we know what you're, one, yeah. so all we know what you're talking about continue but like but like basically like <laughs> okay. like the villain should have been in like all for one and now it's just like we just have to. Which this is just the result of just like just Tom around just having to like build up to like all for one, yeah. Because because like he's just he's just lacking right now, and that's that's just what we're seeing. So that's why, yeah, that's just why I just just the pacing and like the story right now just seems like just taking a backseat because we have we just have to wait for Tomra to keep building up, which is it's getting annoying now. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see like the new villain like they announce for this next season. I don't uh, think it's gonna be Tomara straight up. I think it's gonna be. I mean, maybe sound like like the next the next arc is gonna be League of Villains again. Yeah, I think it's just a League of Villains. Really? Dude, t- That's t- what yeah. the preview made it sound like. Like with what the heroes have been doing and like just like how much they've improved. Like the League of Villains just seems so lame now. I can't see them really like uh, matching up I, to I them think at I all. Mean, the next arc, just what's more up? League... What did you say, David? Sorry. I, I just think like next arc is just gonna be more League of Villains. That's what the previews. Uh, yeah, okay. fun. The only thing I'm more excited about is like now, like I think there's gonna be more people from the class. Like I think like um like Bakugo and Todoroki are gonna come back because they finished Dude. their their license. So I miss Bakugo so much. I miss that man. Cause this 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 <laughs> arc was mainly focused on Kirishima. Yeah. So which is fine too. I was it's like I Kirishima was just and, like, and then like and then the, the the big three. Or it was basically just like me like Miro and and Tamaki. Just we didn't even see me like um the other girl that was in the top three. Yeah, I know she was just like knocked out, but I don't. We don't even know what she did. Like, oh no, well, no, she was just outside fighting with the, yeah. the other guy. I forgot. Yeah, she got. Yeah, she got tired because I forgot that she uses like her own stamina or power or something, and then she gets like but exhausted. It's like, so it's, like this arc is basically it was like it was like Deku, like Miro, Tamaki, and like Kirishima. So it's funny they came in the clutch. So like, I'm, that's why I guess next arc I'll be more excited to see like everyone else. I think everyone else has a chance coming in, like just Todoroki and Bakugo. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna see too much of Big Three here. Especially with uh, Lumillion missing his power, unless he's just trying to him, you know, in a way, either find himself or just like kind of how he's like, going like, to again. Seems like a waste because they're they're introduced just for this arc, and it seems like we're not going to see them much anymore. It's okay, dude. So, Sun Eater came in the clutch, it saved uh, saved Aizawa for me, so that was great. With the swordfish, finally. Um, I mean, 
yeah, from the looks of it, I think everything that's been done so far in this arc is just to set up the main cast, right? The main, the main one uh, A class, and then the main League of Villains. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you know, honestly, I don't think there's anything. There wasn't really anything set up for these new villains, right? Like uh, with Chisaki and his group, and then with the big three, like they seem to have pretty big roles. But I feel like they had like the one one episode or two to kind of just showcase what they can do. And and that was it. Now this is going to toss them to the side, and then I guess uh, Sun Eater might be might play a role now. Not that Kirby Shimila is like injured or 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 not, but then with Lamillion being injured and having no quirk, I think he's just be more supporting cast now. Well, uh, th- well with Nida though, I mean Nida, you can see like his last thing was actually looking at Lamillion's future, and he still says he he was going to be like a, like a great hero. Uh, I don't know if he meant like you know either like his quirk comes back or if it's just because he's a beast. <laughs> And he's gonna find a way. He's trying to find a way. But... Dude, he, he's gotta find a way. He's too good of a character. I mean, he was dying, and his student was crying, so he might have just said it to get him to uh, not be as sad. I can't see Night Eye being that type. He was kind the of man, a hard ass for most of the time. The man's dying, sir. Just just let him do what he wants, okay? <laughs> I, I suppose, yeah. Brian, any thoughts? Any like power? Power! Power? <laughs> That's all I got, dude. That man's gonna come it. back stronger than ever. How about, how about uh, for thoughts for next season? No, oh, next season? Yeah, or not? Yeah, the, or next arc. I mean, say. next arc. Yeah, oh, the next, next arc. arc. Uh yeah. It looks like they're just setting up for another League of Villains arc. Um, if anything, I think some people in the League of Villains are be like, "Yo, y'all are tripping," and then they're in like <laughs> fight back or like sabotage inside and shit. So that's my thoughts. Or attempt to leave, maybe. I was thinking of actually, yeah, that too. like that lizard dude. Like, he yeah. was like, This is, I followed Stain's like way of thinking, and then he was like, I am not down for this shit, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could easily see him being like the guy that kind of, I would say, like attempts to like lead, but I don't even know who else followed. Like, I don't know who else besides him came into the League of Villains, um, yeah. because of Stain. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but Spinner, he seems like the type of character, too. He's the easy throwaway. Like yeah. Where, where I, I can easily see him just walking up to Tomra, just saying, like, I don't believe in your ways. Tries to leave, then Tomra just going him. <laughs> because it, I, cause I don't even know his quirk besides looking like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> a lizard? What? Dude, it, whatever. Lizard, reptile, it's the same thing. But that's all No, I just no. You just basically insulted the whole fandom of Ninja Turtles. Okay. Yeah. Um, his quirk is gecko. What? The so basically, it makes him an ninja. Gecko turtle. grants him a reptilian appearance and ability to cling onto walls and other sheer surfaces. Ninja turtle. But um, I don't know. I'm excited for like the bounce back. I I don't think I don't think Hero Academia is gonna have two bad arcs in a row. I'm excited for the opening song, <laughs> the new opening song and ending song. I've always I always like uh, Hero Academia songs. I'm sure they'll kill it. Hopefully. That's all I got. I just hope they do better character development for Deku now, now that he's kind of experienced his first uh, big case, in a sense. And now that the... Guys, I wanna... uh, now that the, Kuro, the, the the kids have, like, dealt with death, or well, someone on their side, uh, hopefully it um, acts as a catalyst for them to transcend to the next level. Especially with Deku. I was, I was really disappointed with Deku, this, this arc. Yeah. Goes up to twenty percent and still can't do anything. Right. <laughs> Feels bad, man. I just want to see my boy Todoroki come back. Yeah, I want to see Todoroki. I want to see Bakugo. I want to see the wind guy from the other school if he's even the thing yeah. anymore. I just want to see other characters. Like, yeah. just, I want everyone basically. I want like more team attacks now. Just, just yeah. You know. Yeah, like who said? I'm currently disappointed in Deku. Like it, we we saw him at the like constant hundred percent. I don't think Ares just going to be strapped to his back from here on out going on missions. Nah. Uh, so I just want to see. I just want to see development with other people, like with other other uh, the other cl- uh, classmates, their quirks, uh, more than the main guy, which sounds terrible. But yeah, that's true. I think yep. I think I'm good. All right, so we're in it there for now for Heroctamia. Uh, we're gonna move on next to Haikyuu to the top. Woohoo! Pass it over to Stern and Goo. Oh Fine. yeah. Mute your ears. Okay, I see you do that already. <laughs> um. Yeah, go ahead, go. You start up. Okay, so Haikyuu. Uh, basically, nothing too crazy going on. On this episode, they focus mainly on Hinata's growth, right? Uh, 
as of right now, he's still at that training camp, but uh, he's just a ball boy. And everyone that he meets or talks to is like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? And uh, pretty much the whole episode is just Hinata trying to figure out what he needs to do to girls a volleyball player. Uh, basically, it's a team sport, but everyone has something that they can contribute to the team. And as for Hinata, he's not really contributing much other than being the <laughs> like the like attacker, right? Like he can't do anything on his own, so he's kind of a like a crutch for his team in a sense. Um, and I think at the end of this episode, it shows him coming out of the closet with a mop, and he said he's going <laughs> to mop. So I don't know oh, if this hey. is supposed to be like a like uh what is this like a metaphor for something amazing that's going to happen but yeah i, I don't he's know just, he's just all in on being a ball boy he's going to clean everything I don't yeah cuz apparently being a ball boy isn't easy so uh yeah. he's got to take it seriously i guess yeah yeah he's yeah, really like his only his, his really only role on the team right now i mean he's like a, he's a good decoy but then he really can't do anything without kagayama like how the old guy said I think yep. I think that's the only guy that guy has said for anything for like a, any kind of um, pointers, I guess. Besides yeah. just like you know, do better. But that's what it seemed like to me, at least. Um, but um, I still think this episode was fairly slow. Like there wasn't much. They're still building up. Um, so I mean, there's only been two episodes, but I consider this training arc pretty weak so far. Like it really hasn't been that funny. Um, this second episode is the first time I actually really noticed that the animation quality is uh, different from the other seasons, and it seems worse. I don't know really? if you agree. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like something with the animation. Like, it's just not... It, it, like, it, it doesn't move. It's not as fluid. It's uh, It doesn't seem as detailed as, or as, like, the the previous season. It just feels weird. As I mean, I just watched this, like, what, like maybe, like, a month and a half ago or so from the pre- previous season, so I don't know if you... Uh, you should try going back and just like skipping through a few like parts of the fights, and to see like uh, and to see if you notice a difference as well. I know from the previous seasons as well, when um you know when they have the face in the net, and you, of course it's on the other side of it. Um, they made it seem a lot. I guess it wasn't as noticeable in the sense where their face would be through the net, but then like the lines for the net would be connected to the face still. For this season, like the lines aren't even near the face, and it just seems really. It seems way more noticeable. Uh, well, to be fair, I feel like the, the characters are more refined in this in this season. Um, like the highlights are more thickened or more dark, uh-huh. more darkened. Right. Uh, yeah. But again, we haven't really seen any like action scenes yet or no matches. Yeah, so I was holding off, but yeah, like I'd have to wait and see how they animate that. But I think yeah. for the for the pace that the story is going and with what they're going with, I, I think the animation is fine. Uh, just to kind of showcase yeah, it's, it's still images, cases. so it's fine. Yeah, um, but I, I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, hopefully, with the next episode, things will start to go down. Um, yeah, Kageyama was completely left out. Like their their training camp wasn't even included in this. Uh, it was That's basically, true. especially just Hinata at uh, Shiro Toriyama, whatever, um, being a ball boy. So uh, I, we're gonna have to wait and see. I almost feel like um, for Kageyama, Kageyama's arc feels like it would almost be better if let's just say he just like they go to the match he just shows up and then during the match then they i can easily see them where they just show flashbacks from his training um oh, instead of just maybe throwing it in you know are you worried like you're thinking about that too right oh god if that's the case uh i don't know that could easily happen yeah with 24 episodes uh i, well, I guess half of that because uh they're, they're taking a break remember in between so there's gotta be a stopping point somewhere Right, but but with twenty four episodes to finish this and then the actual national tournament, I guess yeah, that would have to make sense. Like they can only focus on one character and then bring him to the tournament, and then have the last twelve episodes yeah. be on the tournament itself. So I guess that would have to make do. Especially since um, for this season, uh, for the previous season when I was when I was watching, they were, I mean, they were pretty quick with covering players' arcs, maybe one or two episodes, and this, um, I mean, this is like kind of Hinata's arc or whatever you want to call it for for training camp and it's like it doesn't even feel like it's that close to being finished and they they i think they said sometime in the episode they have four or five days before um before national starts yep Mm -hmm. so i mean i I, when i when i heard that i was like okay this arc is going to be pretty quick and then it just felt like um they're, they're definitely taking a lot of time 
going through this. So I, then I was like, okay, maybe this is going to seem a little long, a little longer than five days. Um, to be honest with you, I feel like they're going to wrap it up in the next episode for Hinata. And so. yeah, and then they'll probably either move to Kagiyama or move back to the main, uh, the main school uh, at Carcino and then go from there. Because like at Carcino currently, all they're doing is just working on their serves. That's all you see them working on. So I don't see how probably a good move. I don't see how they're going to improve, honestly, as a team um, with half their team gone. So um, I, I think that's why they I think that's why they basically or the coach said, you know, just focus on serves. You guys suck. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Even though Hinata should be a part of that. Oh, the guy's trash at serve. He's trash. At, last thing, like Hinata is basically trash at everything, but like being a spiker, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um. So yeah, like I said, I hopefully they wrap it up with the next episode and then they start working on the other teammates because like you know mm-hmm. uh, Tsukishima is there is there too. So like hopefully he picks up some pointers on whatever he's good at, right? Which is basically defending. Right. Um yeah. and then maybe they do like like a couple minutes over at Kaya Kagiyama's uh, training camp. And uh-huh. you see a little bit of what he's starting to learn. And then the the fruits of their labor is hopefully being shown at the tournament. But um yeah, as of right now, it's, it's it's been pretty slow, so it's just all speculation at this point. Yeah, I'm still excited, but the only thing that's bothering me right now is animation. So I'm really hope I get past that, and I hope it's I hope like you said, like during like the during the the points or the actual matches that they they pick up the animation for it, and then hopefully similar to the previous seasons because the, definitely the the action for those previous seasons looks so good, and like some early shots from the OVAs because I think the OVAs were new or with the newer animation okay. and they, they it was it Not was that kind great. of bothersome yeah we'll see i mean story is still solid yeah. but, I've always, but animation's always bothered me <laughs> i'm just trying not to have high hopes because I, I tend to be let down so um yeah i'm gonna go with a little overflow expectations and then see what happens from there same all right um but yeah that's pretty much it with haiku though for this episode mm-hmm all right, so, so that's all we have for IQ, and then we're gonna move on next to Infinite Dendrogram. Oh boy, Strand's favorite. <laughs> oh uh, yes, I I love my VR MMOs. <laughs> we all know what Strand. We probably can tell what Strand enjoys, but um, uh-huh. so yeah. this second episode, basically, what happened was um, kind of got. Um, let me see. Actually. Actually, well, there's nothing really much happened. This it kind of like gave more info on the world, kind of gave some backstory on kind of um, the because was it the, the kingdom that they're in? Like they got invaded by another kingdom, and yep. not like the top the top players like joined in, and so that's they lost like half like or a third of the territory, and so that's just giving a little more backstory to like the world. Um, we did see this episode too. Um. The main character, he he died, and basically, like the rule was like if you die, you get, uh, the twenty four hour restriction log on restriction. So that was that was pretty funny. Just like he just got re- he just got locked out for twenty four hours. Although I didn't I didn't realize that um that the time in there was like slower than time outside, which I don't know how that really works for VR, but or, or for oh dive tech. Um, apparently, for every one hour in the real world, there's three hours in a game. I don't understand how that happens with like the dive tech, but whatever. Again, I mean, that's, just, that's more like that's I, again I'm doing more similarly to sword art. I was gonna say it's like the same thing they're doing with alicization. It's it's advanced mechanics, but uh, I mean, it, it kind of none of us can understand. No, it kind of goes off with the theory too that um, they mentioned that whatever you you whenever you dream, like everything goes so fast paced, but when you wake up, it's only been like eight hours or whatever. But it feels like you've been in your dreams for like days on end. So I think they're just following that philosophy. And then with your mind not being restricted to like just the physical aspects of the world, it allows you to just process things a lot faster without restriction. So maybe that's why it's a faster time frame than the real world. I guess. This kid, well, this kid was like playing. Um. This kid was also like he's been playing for a while, so yeah. It also seems that they have notifications for when you have to do stuff in the real world. Like the guy had to take yeah, but... this, the guy had to eat, and then he logged out. Yeah, that was kind of cool. 
Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, because he started, he started like really early, or he started like I think like at six or whatever, and he was playing like four in the morning or something before he got kicked out. Same. So. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a nice add on, right? Nice touch. The dream. So. And then I'm all, and they kind of explain to they introduce like the ranks. I guess that's superior. Yep, um, low, high, oh, and superior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another unfair make <laughs> sense of RNG. It's yeah, because it's like. Because he he ran into the other character, other guy, who um, like he had like was it a guardian embryo, yeah. a, a guardian embryo that's succubus apparently. <laughs> I'd want the so succubus. Like, <laughs> okay, it's, it's so weird how it just it seems like what you get is random. Like I don't know if that's a good like game mechanic, but no, they said that what it never is what what develops from the embryo is like your deepest desires. Uh, that's why, like, when he mentioned that, oh, your guardian's a succubus, it's a human, it's a humanoid form. That's why the guy was so embarrassed because it showcased that deep inside he is kind of a lustful character. <laughs> guys, guys, let's just be honest. Like, deep inside, it's just like how deep their pockets are. It's pay to win. Right, right, I guess. Um, See. Yeah, no, that's what the embryos represent. Or re- represents your, your inner personality, I guess. Man, I'd be kind of scared to play this game. I would be, I would be scared about what, what comes out of the embryo. You're basically the, the the giant bear. That would be you, sir. So you don't have to worry about uh, it. No, no, God. you haven't. You have a really etchy embryo. Hell yeah. Also, the guy he picked a paladin as his class. I'm like, really? You have like a tank? I mean, I don't see why not. His his weapon is pretty strong already. Yeah. Yeah, he has a broken weapon. But again, it's also weird. I like that your embryo. You get an embryo regardless of like what class you pick or whatever. Yeah, like what happens? Like, let's say, but let's say before the embryo hatches, let's just say you decide to go tank, and then it, just, it becomes a bow. What happens then? Uh, oh, no. silence. You're a cannon, sir. You have now become a cannon. <laughs> I know, so it's like, yeah, it's really heavy weird. Artillery. Just... <laughs> That's right. Like legit heavy. Yeah. But to be fair, I think it would, you would have probably developed it before you picked the class. Like, the only reason why the MC has so. so much info or he's progressing so fast is because he's had his older brother, like, guiding him through the whole steps, right? So, I suppose a normal player just starting out, I don't think they would, like, know all this information or, pers- or progress as fast. Yeah, because I, I guess, like, I, um, before, like, my notes, I was writing down, like, um, like what, uh, with, like, how they got all the money, but I forgot they did the just high end quest. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming that's where he got like all the money from. Probably. So I was first thinking like, how did he get like all this money? How is he getting Absolutely. all these things? They totally didn't explain well how like this level zero killed like, like the huge like monster from a level like a level five quest. Bro, pay to win weapon. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, but even then, the the three kings or whatever, the ones that kind of initiated the whole plan, uh, even they they don't know what's going on. That's why that one guy was so interested in this character. Um, so yeah, just really OP weapon, but I think they'll probably explain later on as to like why he's so strong or why it's so strong. Yeah. Hopefully, you those three I think they're players. They sound like players instead of like NPC characters. Well, they're players. I don't know why they would be there. Okay. I want to say they're the the three highest ranking players in in that oh, kingdom. Okay, that makes more sense then. Yeah, the big three. Yeah, because they yeah. they have this like evil like personality or aura that's being put off by them. And then it kind of makes, one of them. and it kind of makes sense as to why, like, uh, when the king uh, asked for help for the the fight in the war, they didn't show up, and that's something that evil people would do to kind of overthrow the kingdom to kind of take control of it. So that's that's why I was uh, getting off of that. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes more sense. And apparently, this world <laughs> that they're playing in is just overrun by bee cares. <laughs> oh like yeah, which. Yeah, it just well they even said like oh it's like oh we can't double up in any of these areas because PKers are everywhere. Oh, okay, but yeah. this is the only place we can go because it's because you have Dude, to. Dude, that, that, to get that in. one guy who was shooting off his his thing—it looked like a, like the alien basically. That's what I thought of, like a tiny oh, alien. Uh, right, right with the chains from Shuka and Infinite are I and it or not? I'm sorry, and oh, that, well, that was, that's a different guy. Yeah, no, that was, but that was that was in the that was in the um. That was in like the dungeon though. Before that, he was in the forest. That's before he died. Oh, you're talking about the the PK. The okay. PK, yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, because like his the thing shot out. Like it looked like the aliens from Aliens vs Predator. Yeah, yep. really weird mm-hmm. uh, ability, <laughs> I guess. 
I don't know. It's just like the PKers in this world are like all the 12 by the way characters because it's like the one place that was safe is the one where you had to pay I don't know how much to get in. And then, of course, none of them awesome. were there. Yeah, something like that. So it's just like, yeah. okay. So they're just they're just 12 year old kids. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, hey, but yeah, you know it kind of. Yeah, it, it reminds me of just the old MMORPG games, where basically everything in the wild was like, uh, like fair play for PKers. So, I, I guess it's that no seems like rules. a lot of these MMO shows, like all these, like the thing that they never know, like the the game design designers never know how to properly do with PKers. Like just have like a PvP server or something. I don't know. Like I don't know well, why it's so hard for these designers. Well, again, maybe they're just like old school gamers because. These mechanics this are is 2043, sir. Well, again, these old school mechanics are very, <laughs> uh, very interesting. Why they choose to follow these mechanics? You think interesting, or the fact that the writers are old school and they can't like, they can't like, again, like I, these are people who probably haven't played games. I think sure, it's a cool sure, old school, old school. Sure. I think it's a cool mechanic to know when you have to pee and eat. I'm okay with yeah, that, bro. That's, that's like quality of life. That's called Wait, a life feature. That is that is the future, David. Yeah. We'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you in twenty three years, Stren. When you're when you shit yourself oh, on your bed because you can't dude, they, they get to your game. At that point, they won't even need. I won't even need a notification. I'll just have. I'll have the the IVs going straight into me, and it'll be it'll be good to go. You be the guy with like all your pain receptors on. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm gonna pass on those. You want to feel the. You want to have the the feeling. Yes, I want the the feeling of just like like my flesh being. Covered. You want you want all those aliens, just like a thousand aliens, just like suddenly hitting you, and then before you get logged off. Yeah, we got those. We got the. Was it the the succubus girls? You know, there's gonna be you know there's gonna be some tentacle chicks in there. Um. Yeah. About that. Maybe that's just you. Nah, nah. They're they're leading up to that point. Second episode, they throw in a succubus. Come on. Uh no, well, I mean, one time thing. I think it's a one time thing. I don't think we're gonna see that guy ever again. Or we'll see. No, him I'm sure we'll see, we'll see him again. I'm I'm pretty sure him and that guy so, in the dungeon. Like he had barely anything to do in this episode besides just meeting up, fan service. Yeah, indeed. Basically. Just terrible animation fan service. It's like the the lower level of uh of uh what what is it um fire force whatever I'm done let's move on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, that's that's it for infant dendrogram. <laughs> we're and then um we're just gonna move on to fake grind order. And then just gonna be mean strand again. Yes. Yes. So this one. Okay. I knew I kind of need remember what happened because I watched this yesterday. But basically, um, yeah, a lot of he, this was like a mobile conversation. Because they threw they threw the axe over to uh, that temple to so again, Gorgon's temple. Because that's that's supposed to weaken Gorgon, wasn't it? It was supposed to like weaken her divinity and uh, I guess just weaken her. Oh, yeah. And then I guess the reveal too was like Anna was also uh, like some sort of like Gorgon as well or Medusa. Like, I think the race is Gorgon. I don't think, I don't know if she's Medusa or not, but yeah, something really, I think something related to Medusa though. But, but I got Gorgon, which, I, yep. which I don't know. It seems like Fate is so obsessed with having their, their rider class be, be like related to like Medusa. Is she writer or assassin? I thought she was writer. I have no idea. I assume like if you have chains, more... you're a writer. Yeah. Just like whatever, just, like, just like Sakura. Oh, she does have chains. Just kidding. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Or like, like you know, the spoiler in Heaven's Field, like it's like Sakura and stuff. So <gasps> spoilers. But yeah, but, I, I don't know. But I guess I guess I should have seen it coming, like because she like, definitely looks like <laughs> when like when you know another person with chains end up being related to Medusa. <laughs> Well, I mean, she even looked a lot like, uh, you know, Medusa, like 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 Ryder and like from their old Fate series. Yeah, yeah. I guess I could just say Ryder from Fate, say. Eh? But I'm trying to. But yeah, besides that, like, really, not much happened. Like the next episode seems like it's gonna something's gonna happen because they met up with um, the Gorgon at the end. Well, they went That's into like the, the cave where um, where she was um, hells the people in the, the the pod stuff. Yeah. So I I think that's where um um Ushiwaka Ushiwaka I'm sure that's where she's gonna come in being yep. like possessed. Yep. Next episode is when the budget drops. <laughs> you think so? It's what we've all been waiting for. Well, I think I think a part oh, of drop, it. Oh, drop drop you mean as in like like a higher quality? 
But good, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I, I thought you meant like drop word. as in like lower quality. Oh hell no. No, no. It's gonna be high. It's I mean high quality. This whole, this whole series or season. Yeah. Yeah, oh no, I have no no problem with the animation at all for especially yeah, this, animation this quality. Like, but... This is I, I forgot yeah. what else they did, but like they they're a pretty good studio. But I meant like for like this is gonna be returning I don't know about on like the level of I think it was episode eight or nine. I can't remember I can't remember. I think it was when nine, it the one okay. with like both like Leonidas and Ushiwaru yep. attacking the epic epic fights. I don't know yeah, if it's Gorgon. gonna be at that level. But uh, I mean it's like next episode I would assume is like either fighting Gorgon or um Ush- was it Ushiwaka. Yeah. Um but I think the the main battle it's, it's leading up to is gonna be Inkido and Gilgamesh. I mean I would assume they're probably a part I, of that as well. I hope Gilgamesh gets like the big budget. Yeah, I hope so too. His ability is like like it, it's it, like for his ability is perfect. If they save it for Mash who just puts up a wall, mm. I don't know, man. That took it forever to do for this this season. Yeah, but you know, it, it finally yeah, happened it, last it forever episode. Forever costs like a command spell. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's also <laughs> um, uh, earlier this, this episode we had um we had um Ketsu Ketsu Goat fighting against some um, King Zoom as well, but it wasn't really much of a fight. Yeah, it, it was it was just a diversion for the real for the real thing. But, I don't know. Yeah, next episode is going to be. I mean, the fight there. That's this. This episode was just kind of the setup for that. So it's just maybe how. how the I, was, animation I was wondering, works. like, are they going to do anything at all with the underworld? Because they basically they freed, um, like the other the other half of Ishtar, and then they had the other guy. Briefly, I, but did they ever come up again? Or is this... I wouldn't be surprised if it's done. Um, like okay. because because with the the underworld, I mean, uh, the reason why Gilgamesh was there, he was looking for Akito. Not there, so he's you know he's out. They severed the ties for the other Ishtar. I can't remember her name. <laughs> I was on top of it last time, but um, and they you know they severed the ties for her, so she's not a part of that world anymore. Even though we have no idea what that other guy is, but maybe we maybe we saw him from. No, I was going to say from others. Well, you could maybe still see him from from the other arcs or the other um, the other what, what, the singularities. Yeah, the other singularities. Maybe he was a part of those. I have no idea, but it just feels like they're going to be done. Because how many episodes are what? Well, they still have it's what seven? Episodes, I think. So they still have what seven, six, six episodes left. Something. Oh, know. and also they're taking a break after episode fifteen and eighteen, I think. Or yeah, again, woo-hoo. so they're taking like yeah two. So what are I forgot what this was, but like they're taking a break after those two. So it's fine. They got to save up money for the budget. I'm fine with it. I don't love money. Like I think Cloverworks is pretty well funded. Well, even Anime News, they they had like a little article that uh, where they talked to I think the guy like the head producer behind yeah, it. Yeah, said of, he was saying it was up ahead of yeah production schedule. That's a cover up. Which is I don't know. It's just it's really weird because <laughs> it's just twenty one episodes, but like this game, this mobile game, made so much money. I don't believe for a second you didn't have enough budget for more than twenty one episodes. Yeah, twenty one's a weird number. I'm not gonna lie. It, it's weird. It's weird skipping all the way to the end and then also doing. Babylon is a movie. Like, just start from the beginning, man. You have the money. Like, don't BS us. Yeah, I really want to know what their what their plan or their game plan was behind all this. Because uh, just, like... I didn't mention too that, like, because uh, Fake Grand Order, the mobile game was made by Anaplex, and Anaplex is under Sony Music. And so, like, based so secondly, all this is and like and A One in general, A One was where like was. Where Cloverworks came from, Cloverworks was like a spin-off of A1. Like Cloverworks was basically doing like a, like a lot of high tier animation stuff, whereas A1 focused stuff on like sword art. And so like right. a lot of like the the high tier animation from sword art branched off in Cloverworks. Mm-hmm. But like all this branching off, like they still came from A1, which is part of Anaplex, which is part of Sony Music. So it's like you have these huge corporations. It's like they have no excuse for not having enough money. Yeah, I feel like that's also why, like, that's another reason why we feel like we're so lost this season and, like, things just don't connect or make sense is because we kind of missed six other singularities. Like, I, I'm going to keep saying this over and over. It's like, you have the money, just adapt all of it. Like, I don't want to hear yeah. any BS from Manaplex or Sony That's music. weird. Who knows? Maybe they'll go back at some point or maybe they just assume it's just so far back that people who have played the mobile game already know that story. I have no idea. It's just dumb. <laughs> Yeah, it's whatever, but anyway, we can move on. All right, so that's all I had for Fake Grand Order. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Not much to talk about for this show. <laughs> we're, we're not the biggest fake fan. I think it would be better if we had people actually play the game to compare, but 
I played a bit and I got bored. Just now, it's just like it's it's hard for like non Moline players to follow. Like just just honestly, like, I'll just just watch find a YouTube video that just like has a compilation of all the fights. That's all you really need. Yep, I refuse to pay. I'm not gonna pay for mobile games. Just Jesus, just, okay. Just, <laughs> just just yeah, just find a YouTube video. Just for, look at the fights. That's all you really need. So. Yeah. So uh, that's gonna be it for uh, Fate Grand Order, and then that's basically all ourselves. And we're gonna head on to our last section, which is weathering a view. Because me, Stran, and Ku, we all watched this uh, last Wednesday, so we did. Just, I just want to hear you guys' thoughts first before before I go. Um, it was a very enjoyable movie. Um, the lore wasn't that great. Like the story plot didn't really make much sense. But overall, I think for a, a love story and uh, with like the some of the funny parts that I thought was funny. I don't know what Sren thought was funny in the movie, but um, I, I think it was well written. Yeah. It was it was enjoyable. I, right, I so almost you're, Sren, you're, you're, oh, okay. Sren, your impression, initial impressions. Um, uh, well, it's like already like I wasn't that much of a fan of uh, your name. Uh, I I keep saying that I think I would have liked it more if I didn't hear so much and like everybody just praising the hell out of it, making it sound like it's on a whole different tier of anything else. And just watching it, like I thought, like animation was animation was fine. Characters were definitely fine. Memorable. Okay. Oh, sorry, animation was really good. Um, sorry, I meant like for the characters <laughs> were fine. So I got myself mixed up. Um, it's I, I definitely think the characters in this show. I don't think people are really? going to really remember them. I think they were fairly, uh, I don't want to say generic, but just like how they built them up. I mean, it's just like there was really like no kind of like backstory or lore with really either one of these characters. Uh, I'm going to pull them. Okay, never mind. Um, so, and it's uh, like the like the story was enjoyable. I mean, I, it, it, or it was, again, fine. <laughs> I don't want to say like generic, but it just felt like really nothing special. Um, uh, apparently, Japan has a major gun problem. They seem to be everywhere. Uh, we can even get that a little later, though. Trend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so but yeah, that's just my initial thoughts on there. Yeah. So, so, so for me, mm-hmm. um, I, so when I walked out of that theater, I felt really good. Like it felt like a really good movie to like. It was like a feel good movie, and I really enjoyed watching it. There was a part like it, I kind of agree with Ku. Like just like there's a part like, in the middle where like it, that story kind of like, like I don't know. It was it felt really weird. It's like, either the storytelling or like the pacing. It, just, it felt like a little off. Like transitioning from the middle to the end, it, just, it felt really weird. Like, because I was trying to like just follow what was happening, and like it just. So, I I I enjoy the characters myself, but like just the story or just what was happening, it just it felt really weird. So, and I think I think I still enjoy your name, even though I I enjoy this movie. I probably enjoy your name a little more. I my favorite I probably my favorite Sorry. Michael Shinkai movie is probably still Five Centimeters Per Second. So I haven't watched many of his other movies, but it's like I think I still like five centimeters per second. Yeah. So we can, and then so that's our initial impressions. And then we can just go down more into just like let's go some more of what happened in the the movie. So like Stran was saying, like the gun. I, okay, I thought the gun was like so dumb because like because guns is, is such a, a huge too. thing in Japan, where like like it's because it's it's totally banned and like it's so hard to get one if you're not a criminal. And like, yeah. and they just—it was brought in this movie, but I think in the end, it just didn't really matter much, really. Yeah, it was just uh, a plot device put it in there in the beginning to kind of <laughs> emphasize. Oh, what do you know? This kid found a gun in a recycling bin, like, like that. Like, um... but before that, they set it up by finding eighteen. They confiscated what is it, eighteen guns? Yeah. yeah, but that was it. They never like added on to that later on. So it's like, what was the point of that in that in the beginning? You know, the whole the only other time was it was like it was because. They found like they found it was a security camera, but you didn't need a gun for the security camera to catch pictures of him. And then also there's at the end, like when they have to stand off with the police, but even still, like it's just you didn't really need that. You could have just done something else. Really right. the only the only reason for like the eight, like the confiscated eighteen guns was just to I guess back up the you know, back up the parts where he found two guns. No, it was just one gun. Uh well he found the one in the bag but then he he got the, he, you know he found the one that just happened to be laying right next to him at the end. 
Or was no, it? Or was no, it one no, of the officers? That's the same that, was, one. that was the same gun that he threw away because that's where he and a girl ended up with afterwards when they escaped from the uh, that yakuza group, I guess, or whatever. Oh damn! Yeah, yeah I didn't even recognize then, that. Yeah, yeah and he, they, he threw like it's it's the building where the shrine was. So he threw the gun away there, and then he came back to it, and that's the same gun from the beginning. Yeah, oh, just kidding. That's yeah. how he knew the gun was loaded and everything too. So okay, so I'm um, I'm um, <laughs> I don't want to say I'm more okay with it, but. It's not as ridiculous. <laughs> Again, it's a horror plot device. I don't think they needed to add yeah. that in there, to be it's honest. Dumb. Like, it had nothing to do with the story, also. <laughs> it's just because we live in America, guys. <laughs> right. You're right. It's not that big of a deal. It's for us. But it's just like, this, is a, this, this takes place in Tokyo. So it's like, it's really weird how, how casual like the whole gun thing was. Like, you think it would be a bigger deal for that country? Yeah. But but uh, yeah, another deal that I had, or a big problem, or another, another problem that I had is like the, the Sunshine Girl. Where it just like they make it sound Tina. like this, yeah. Where they just make it sound like the Sunshine Girl is just a myth, but yet they make a website like for people to basically to hire her to like bring sunshine, and then they accepted the fact like so easy, like oh my god, this is the Sunshine Girl, and then immediately it's like, well, where did she go? And then it's like, well, she disappeared because she's the Sunshine Girl, and everybody's like, nah, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell the truth, where is she really? No. To to be fair, right in the beginning, this is why I, I kind of the the one gripe I had with the movie was they were building up this lore about the Sunshine Girls or the Weather Maidens or whatever. Like they were mm-hmm. building it up, so you kind of had some kind of like backstory to it. And then, uh, like even in the very beginning, the first request they had for the Sunshine Girl for Hina was that oh, you know, we didn't really believe in you, but we just needed some good luck charm, and we we're hoping that you can kind of help. <laughs> And then from that we point on, lulls. <laughs> right, we hired you for the lulls, right? And then eventually they kept having success, so they kept getting more and more requests. And that was basically it. Um, and then uh, midway or like like towards the later half of the movie, they kind of just throw the lore out the window and just said, you know, like, fuck it, just whatever goes, yeah. right? Whatever yeah. makes sense for the story to progress, that's what we're going to throw it in there. Um, so they kind of just, like the first half of the movie, all that buildup just went out the window, which is the gripe that I had with the movie. And then yeah, like we, so like wait, we, wait, what do you mean by like they let it go? Like because the Lord it was basically like, I mean, she had to be the sacrifice. That was like the main thing about the sun, the, the weather made in. Well, I, I think right. it just means like the lore in general, like because like I mean, we got the we got partially, uh, some our partial like Hina backstory, but we got nothing from the main guy. Um, all we know is he ran away from home. We have no idea why. We don't know what happened. We, uh, we I think the only thing we know is like the town. That he came from just because you know he they start him off in the uh they start him off in the town like after like the whole was it three years later yep yeah three years after the incident but uh what i meant was is like they they built up by going to the psychic first and then they kind of give like a little intro as to like the sunshine girl that oh it's it's legit a thing it's from it's from like old folklore and then uh like a few like like 20 30 minutes later they go to that uh that that monk that had that that mural on the on the ceiling and they were diving more into the lore of the sunshine girl and that's when you knew for sure that like something was going to happen to hina but i was kind of hoping it would be like a third portion where it would kind of explain like how they would save her or um like how the resolution oh, okay. came to be to where they didn't need to sacrifice the the weather girls anymore but then the reason why i say all hell broke loose was because the guy literally went to the same shrine he was able to somehow uh like teleport to where Hina was, save her, and he was able to get away with everything. Okay, okay now I, I get what you're saying because that, that was kind of like my issue too. Like it, that, the whole transition, just from like Hina disappearing to him going to that, just that it just felt so weird. Like just that transition in the story, like and right. then they had the, that basically like the world in the cloud, which was cool, but like it, it didn't really they didn't explain much of it or. Right, it didn't make sense. It was just like put there just for the sake so of the story. Yeah, so that, that's why I mean, like, like, like this weird pacing or storytelling. It's like that's that was my issue too. It's just like it's just, just that tra- that transition. It just felt so weird. And also, like, kind of like this movie too. There's I don't know. If this is really a problem, but I just noticed that like it had like two montages. Basically, like the first time when when Kota when he like got into Tokyo and started working, but then they had another montage with then with him and Hina. So it's like. <laughs> it just felt like like that part like I mean I know they're trying to get, make the time go faster but it just it just felt like you didn't really see them do much everything was just in the montage they made it look so easy to go in the clouds <laughs> yeah something like that 
But at least with your name, there was more character development. Like you grew with the character. You you grew to like them. Uh, they were more developed. But, well, you, you but, knew their yeah, you knew their daily lives and everything. They, like, but they're kind of like beforehand and even kind of like after, like during the whole thing. Right. But this, this you for really this got one, no backstory. Yeah, you cared more for Hina than than anyone else. Even the MC, like you mentioned earlier, there was really no character development with that guy. He was just some kid that ran away from home because he felt suffocated in that little island that he was at. And, and, <laughs> it was like, and, and, that was and, it. and also like um yep. uh, the the guy he worked for, like him and like his niece, like there's like more emphasis on them and the main character. So yeah, at one point I thought it was going to switch over to him because maybe his wife that that passed away. Yeah, maybe she was also a weather maiden, but they didn't really explain. Yeah, much they kind of like that. they kind of like they're, they're kind of foreshadowing that. Yeah, because saying how like his wife died too, and like it made it seem like and like because he showed up suddenly in the sh- in like the, the building where the shrine was. Right, so he I knew exactly he, where he was. You yeah, know? so you you think he's gonna reveal like, oh, I know what you're going through because I I was I was you back then or something. Yeah, so. his his wife definitely had to be a previous uh, maiden. They just said uh, she died was... in an accident. That's all, because the guy didn't like. The guy didn't believe like, Kodaka at all. <laughs> okay, nobody, I mean, nobody so. believed about Hina either, but yet they just uh, accepted a sunshine girl so easily. I mean, 30 bucks for a laugh? Sure, why not, right? Hey, some people pay like 50 <laughs> or 100 or Dude, more. A lot. Yeah, they got a lot of money. There's 30. That was, well, that no, was but that was, that, was, that, was, that was a fee they were charging. It was $30 a fee. But then I guess like later on, people are so appreciative of the fact that they were able to do it. Yeah, they just gave them a shit ton of money. Yep. I mean, they did it for baseball games, um, like just giant events, hosting some sort of party, and it was it just it looked look like a math building. It's kind of weird that like like after when when she was doing it on top of that helicopter pad and it was like like broadcast live, you didn't think they should get more tension after that. She did. Like, they want to be like paparazzi all over her place. Oh, that's what I meant. Okay. No, she probably did. That's why they had to stop. I can't, I mean, even then, like I think she, like she should have gotten more attention from that, but. Well, when it's been raining for like what three weeks straight without stopping, I think that was more of a, a bigger concern than a sunshine girl. So, what was your guys' thoughts on uh, how he rescued her? I think I call bullshit, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just really weird. Like, I think it's more about the ending too. How like he basically like sacrificed like the city, the city for for Hina. So mm-hmm. I, I don't fault the guy for that because I in, in my shoes, if I was him, I would do the exact same thing, you know, fuck the world. <laughs> you terrible, terrible person. Hey, I'm realistic, all right? Um I feel bad for whoever you guys uh, end up with as a sunshine girl. <laughs> I mean, basically it's just kinda like yeah, it's just one of the things where it's like they just do the the other ending you expect, like actually like sacrificing like everyone else for like for your like the other the one person you want to save so i like how yeah, the, I, I like how the water gods and like like when he actually recovered her and where this all hell broke loose and it was just raining just non-stop instead of the the water gods being like okay we'll just take another person they just basically said f y'all <laughs> just kept just going hard on Tokyo. rain for days <laughs> you heathens I mean, yeah. that, that's how these technologies man. always work like the gods are always petty so yeah yeah okay sense. like that's just how it's always worked, but um, but I don't know. It's just I'm I'm pretty sure like people online were trying to like make their like comparison between like 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 climate change and like this movie because basically like because Tokyo is underwater, which is what happened with like, the ice caps melt. So, but it's, like it's kind of weird. It didn't really fit in with, like I don't know. Like, yeah. Like yeah, if he was think- if he was trying to make a message, it didn't really fit in with the comparison with the real world world like. Well, the message they basically yeah, made it sound like you know, like humans weren't at fault. Um, I don't know if uh, it kind was... of yeah, because because the grandma was saying how like two hundred years ago Tokyo Bay was underwater, even though it's not true. Mm-hmm. But, like she was saying like like because the cycle happens like what every like eight hundred years or something. So this is just a natural process cycle. Yeah. So just just deal with it or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I don't know. I f- I feel like the. With that part, it was kind of convoluted, but um, yeah, it, it's kind of whatever at this point because they also mentioned that, uh, like who knows what really happened a long time ago because there wasn't really records kept for like from from ancient history. I think he said, like, what 800 years old was the most oldest records that they had on file. So, 
anything that happened beyond 800 years, it, it, it could have been anything, really. Mm-hmm. So yeah. They left, they left like, they, super open to it. They, they were basically just, I think they, they were basically saying, like, like nature just happens, you just have to deal with it. Right. So, which, yeah. is, which is weird if he's trying, which is, again, weird if he's trying to compare it to climate change, because it's human cause, so... I don't know if he's saying like just deal with deal with like the weather changing because that's part of nature or something. Yeah, I don't know. This the message of this movie was definitely weak. I think it actually went the wrong way for a lot of people. I think well, just at the ending, you basically sacrifice the city for one person. So yeah, Sunshine Girl. I don't. Where yeah, she had her powers removed then, right? Or or was, was it like a blessing? Yes. Something like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, say yes, because... I, assume, like, she was, I think if she uses any more, she'll be taken back or something. But she's still like she still prays. Like it showed it at the end. But like she like... does anything now. Like she just does it just because that's who she is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought they they said something where like the, the blessing or whatever that she had was removed. But yet instead like the gods are still just punishing <laughs> punishing them. Yeah, pretty much. Uh because she no longer is connected to the sky. I think that's what the, the saying was. Is the weather maidens are connected to the sky, so that's why when they pray it, it stops. Um uh, but I think once okay. she escaped with uh the MC, he she she lost that that connection, I'm pretty sure. That seemed like it was so easy to escape too. Like it's so easy to get in there and it's so easy to get out. Like <laughs> Yeah, literally there's a shine on top of an old building. All you gotta do is just walk across and apparently you make it and I don't yeah. see how like no one else has made it through there, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like, oh, you want to get out? Just jump off the cloud. You're fine. Yeah, you'll be alright. Don't see, worry about me, it. Like, for me, since this is a movie, like I give them the benefit of that. Like it's it, they don't have as much time to explain. Yeah. So like, I am more accepting of stuff like that happening because it's a movie, so they have a limited time to do stuff. So right. that doesn't bother me as much. Uh, we also didn't mention that the your name characters actually made a cameo. Like a cameo, and I it's been a while, and I don't really remember the your name characters, I didn't even recognize, uh, yeah. I didn't know either. Mitsuha. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I do not know the names. I'm, for me, it's like I don't know why it took me like when Taki walked in with his grand to his grandma's place. Like, I saw him, and I was like, You look so familiar, why do I not remember you? <laughs> and then after that, it took me a while, like a minute or two, to realize, Oh, it's your name, okay, that's why I, he looks so familiar, yeah. So then, like, so I was then like. I was looking for Mitsuha after that, and then, um, like I think other people had trouble seeing Mitsuha because she looks different than she did in your name. But I, I just knew because like they were, when she was, she was the, the, the sales representative, because they hit her face, so I was like, okay, that's probably something important. They're willing to hide the face, and then they did the face reveal, and then I was like, okay, that's definitely Mitsuha. Yeah, uh, fans of uh, your name will definitely recognize them both. I mean, I, I, it was a long time since I seen the movie, so I just, I just forgot. I just forgot about. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, recognize Taki because he he looks more like generic, but like Mitsu mm-hmm. actually changed. So because I think yeah. she like, had like, I think she had different hairstyle before. So. Yeah, I still think like uh, your name is much much better than this movie. Uh, I don't know if uh, did so? any of you guys. I I I, th- I think so. I think mainly the fact because the the story flowed a lot better. Um, there was way less holes. I, because I I enjoyed your name, but I still think I, I enjoyed this movie too. I mean, not as much, but I don't think it's like that much worse than your name. Um, uh, I I agree that your name. I wouldn't say like if I were to give it a rating out of ten, right? I would give your name nine out of ten, and I would give this movie like a seven point five out of ten. No, oh, I give it like an eight point five. But yeah, I actually gave this movie a seven, but I think I gave your name an eight, only because of the fact people hyped it up like way too much, and it didn't reach that level for me um so the thing is if maybe it's just like to each their own right but at least with your name it yeah, felt like fair. it was a lot structured more uh a, a lot better and smoother and the storyline was driven a lot better and then with this one like i said i was okay with it during the first half but then the second half kind of lost me yeah what you what you guys think of the music uh music was all right i, I liked it like um well, there's a lot of songs though. in this one I think the one I like most is probably like the ending song, or yeah, there was two songs Actually, that I recognized that were like way different from the other ones. But I don't know what band, like it's like whatever the main band is. Like, uh, I think Rat, it was on Rad the... Whips is the yeah. main. Band. It was like the third song. It sounded almost ex- like I thought it was the same song. I, I looked over, I look over to Taylor, and I asked her, I was like, "Is this the same song?" And she started, she just burst out laughing because she, I, I, I swear, she had the same thought. 
<laughs> because it just sounded like each one of those songs sounded so generic. And the only songs that sounded different to me were the was the one with the it was like the the female vocalist, and there was a like a the one that they think I think they showed on the PV or the trailer. Yeah, I forgot oh, which okay, one, yeah. but like there there's there's one song that I I really like, but there was just a lot of songs in this movie. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. Cool. I'd say the soundtrack for Your Name was also better than this one too. There was a lot more variety uh, in Your Name compared to this. I know Stray enjoy the CGI in this movie. Wait, what was the CGI? Like a lot of times when they show like the buildings, a lot of times it's CGI. And also oh. that weird one part where like, when they were at the the top of the, sh- the building, they did the three sixty thing. I thought that part was a little weird. Like, oh yeah, I honestly didn't even really recognize the CGI much. I don't know why. Um, it's mainly like sky like skyscrapers, like when they're doing like the birds, like the like the top view. Okay, yeah, I don't think I was paying too much. But besides that, everything else was like was wasn't everything else is pretty good. Even Very though, pretty. Like, like, I I really like uh, your name, like the the meteors. I just thought that was really pretty, and yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Maybe besides like the cloud world, I didn't really feel like there's much in this movie that matched that. Yeah, I don't know. I love like uh, like wa- like water animation. Like it, they they made it look so nice when they like when you just see like water droplets when they actually look at the ground. Just I don't know how they animated it, but it looks so nice. But I also just like water a lot. Yeah, no, the animation was really good. In this. Like in everything, I, I don't think I had any grasp about any of the animation in the movie. I mean, that's, that's just that's Same. just that's just Michael Shinkai's like style in general. Like he's definitely more style over substance. Yeah, but I feel like this is more colorful and vivid compared to your name. Really? Well, the first part, not the three, not the the three year skip. <laughs> the oh right, right. Skip. A- after they fucked up with the gods, and the gods like fuck it, yeah, it'll just, it all went to hell after that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but, my- but yeah. Oh, okay. um, I just want to mention real quick too, like a lot of the voice acting, like it sounds like actually like normal people instead of the usual anime, like voice actors. Yeah, it did. Like it sounded like, like actual. Too, like... Though. What? Your name sounded kind of like, similar as well. Like I didn't like I didn't think I recognized any of the voices. In your well, name. it's just like they sound like people who would talk normal. Because well, like when because anime voice actors, like they always have to like, it's always more exaggerated, and more yeah. like, it's like more energy. Whereas yeah. like these like the the movie voice actors they sound like like normal people like having a normal conversation so like yeah. so like Hina and like Hodaka, like they both like sound like like normal teenagers instead of like anime characters right oh I, I did also um for your name I appreciated the what was it the comedy or not like, yeah the comedy a lot more in that than this show or than whether with you like I found certain things funny that weren't supposed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't really laugh at too many parts that were, I guess, where they were trying. I don't know. There was a few parts that were trying to go for comedy, but your name I thought was way better at that than uh, weathering with you. Uh, I mean, my favorite. I mean, th- my, my favorite moment probably in this movie was at the end when uh, you know the three years, the three year skip, and they have like the weatherman talking. He's like, mm, "Tomorrow's re- weather will be rain again." I'm thinking like, "How is this guy still employed? It's been three years." Like you think that this guy would have been left like let off like I don't know how long ago, where the guy's just like okay, bro, d- d- just just listen like it, it tomorrow's gonna be rain the next day's gonna be rain we don't need you anymore just I thought I thought like the retire. I just thought the the, the etchy parts were like a distraction like when Quark I was like trying to look at like Natsumi, Natsumi's boobs when she was oh, sleeping was or whatever dumb. yeah or like when she was talking or like or and then she's she looking at like Hina too and she's like what are you looking at like I thought that was just distracting yeah, okay. from yeah. Like, because the movie should have been, like, this wholesome thing, and that just, just the whole, those, like, parts just became distracting. Hey, that, was, that was wholesome, right? He didn't see anything. He was just trying, like a typical man would. No. Or typical, yeah, your, typical prepubescent boy would, you know? Yeah, your name was so much better with that, where when uh when the guy yeah, finally gets name. back in the girl's body, and then he's just crying <laughs> while feeling her, while feeling her body. Yeah. That, that one, one made sense, so because, because, like, he's, yeah, because... The situation he swaps because it, it it makes sense. Whereas this one just it's just being etchy for no reason. Yeah, it was forced. Like I, I hate forced parts where it's just like it just makes you feel awkward. I, I don't know if uh I don't know if I mean, a majority of the uh you know it was a Japanese fan base feels the same. But I know here through like a lot of people like where if it's if it's just forced it just feels weird awkward like where it's just like it it, 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 was, it doesn't need to be there. It was forced and also the voice acting too. Where again it sounds like normal people. So like maybe it was like anime. W- more anime voice, it'd be more funny. Like, yeah, it wasn't like it would fit the situation, but these are like normal people, so then it just felt more 
off. Yeah, comedy's lost, and then yeah, I, I yeah, I see what you mean. But that's all I gotta say. Weatherman MVP. <laughs> right. So overall, like I, I still felt good <laughs> watching the movie. Like it's, it's a good watch. Just yeah, even like how much like I was like talking about like it was still like an enjoyable to watch i mean I, th- yeah. I think part of it was because it was in theaters i don't know if it's gonna have like like i don't know how, how much more it's gonna feel like if i was just watching it at home on my 22 was it my 24 inch monitor mm-hmm. i think that's just yeah um i think it's just like shinkai movies in general it's just you just watch you just watch it like in the moment and you enjoy it and because yeah. if, you, if you overthink it like then it starts to fall apart but yeah, well, with your name, you didn't really have to overthink. Like it made sense. This was a lot of kind of holes that, like, were. I wish we would have got to know more about the characters, like their backstory, feel for them. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, but again, like like Dave was but mentioning, I'm... if if you just try to watch it to enjoy it without overthinking any of the the plots or anything like that, it's it's very enjoyable. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, there's like maybe two points that made me feel very emotional as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, I I think it was a great movie overall. Yeah, just, yeah. If you love animation, you will love this movie. It's, I'm so yeah. I'm so excited for his works. Like even if I like don't enjoy all the stories, like it's still enjoyable to watch. And it's something in theaters too. Like it's so much fun to watch in theaters. Yeah, I'll still see his movies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> but I'm done. I'm good. All right. So Seven I think that's gonna be ten. it for now. Um, so that's it for this week's this week's episode. Um, kind of, honestly, it just feels like, for at least for me and Ku, our sections, it feels like the discussions are kind of weak, just because like it's still Early the season, season, and like it just feels like a lot of these shows are weak. So yeah, yeah. Honestly, the down just, season usually. These are just fillers for the next uh, season, I guess. Yeah, like honestly, we're just waiting till spring where like, there's a lot of sequel. So we'll just we'll just Again. bear through winter and just. <laughs> This just get by with Hero Academia and High Q. Yep. So, but we'll manage. Yeah, we'll manage. All right. Well, I want anyway. Just, that's how we it for now. I want to thank listeners for for uh, uh, you know, watching or listening to this episode. I want to thank the panel for joining me this week. No problem, man. <laughs> yep. Anytime. All right, and then that's <laughs> and so we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Ah!